Gold Coast Premier League Division 3. An oxymoron of sorts. Surface Paradise need five runs to win off the final over. Five off six with six wickets in hand. Six wickets in the hutch. Six wickets in the bank. Gareth Morgan for Mudgery Bar, the captain with the ball in hand. The captain bowls himself. He goes on to not only defend the total, but to take six wickets in a row. By now, you've heard the story. Here's what Gareth Morgan said. I didn't want to let the winning runs come off the younger bowlers because they had bowled so well. And I didn't want them to be down on themselves for it if it was to happen. The captain finishes with seven for 16. The first wicket was caught on the fence at deep mid-wicket. The second was caught at mid-on. The hat-trick was caught at mid-wicket. The fourth was caught at point. And the last two were bowled. That is cricket. Sam Perry. So he's bowling straight. <laughs> My favourite part about this story is uh, peripheral. Okay. Um, the first notification I had about it was on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone tagged us in that this had happened with a scorecard. Yeah. And two or three comments down was from um, – after I wrote something like, more information, please – comment from somebody called Jake Garland yep. who said, I can give you a ball-by-ball ball account if you want. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, hmm. okay, who's, Jake? who's Jake Garland? Who's JG? Look at the scorecard. <laughs> there's uh, there's the opposition, Surfers Paradise. Right. And there's their uh, top or middle order bat, Jake Garland, 65 off 60. <laughs> <gasps> I bet he could. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant from Jake, by the way. Yes. Who, it turns out, is a journo for the Courier Mail who filed off uh, a fair few articles about this. Mm. Fantastic again. All very well written, well chronicled. He's done very, very well. Within one of the stories is a full-blown picture of Jake Garland holding his bat with the caption saying, Jake hits 65 of 60. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we would all do. That's There's exactly, a lot that I like. I, really, exactly right. I, I like what Jake's done there. Yep. I saw other articles from other publications, other mastheads referring to this as grade cricket. Again, Bin clearly yeah. isn't. <clears throat> it's more about me than anyone else. Uh, Gareth Morgan's comments. Very good. Like, not only does he take mm-hmm. six in six, which mm. is the autist's dream, yep. uh, but he then goes on to um, be magnanimous mm. in that he was merely doing it to save the suffering Won't of his younger somebody charges. Think of the children. Indeed. Also, Jake was the Jake Garland was the first wicket of the last over. Indeed. So, so he, he was he, trying to hit a six to yeah, win the game, and he right. thought, you know what? I've done my job. It's one of my three great. Saturdays per yeah. summer that you get. If you if you're a batter and you play this level of cricket, you might have three great weekends. He's mm-hmm. already used one up before Christmas. So, um, what are you making? Oh, I mean, everyone said everything about this game already. Oh, yeah. um, we're a day late because we we're putting some security doors on our <laughs> <laughs> on our studio that's been broken into twice. That's all it is. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, one sort of adjacency conversation of this game, six and six, was. Uh, and you're going to love this because I know this is what you live for. <gasps> yeah. Um, is it a double hat trick? No, it's not because I've taken a double hat trick and that's four and four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I did not <laughs> see that angle. But once again, everyone playing their role. That's right. That's, everyone that's, playing that's, their that's role. my right. Uh, seems to be an Australia v England thing, this discussion. Is it? Uh, strangely, it's, it's the Aussies who have the autistic... Uh, Okay. Approach to this, yep. the the argument that there's some that the sequential order of things means that it's a like it's a quintuple hat trick or some shit, right? Right, okay. uh, quadruple hat trick. Yep. So yep. Yep. the whole one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. Oh the, god, th- yeah, yeah, that yeah. other thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Whereas English go like, well, that means if you hit 102, you've hit a triple century. Yeah. And, and you haven't. Yeah, and y- yeah, mm. so you don't think it like you don't believe in the double hat trick thing. I don't know what I believe anymore. Yeah. And I, I don't know how to talk to a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> this is this is the kind of thing that keeps getting me in the way. It keeps, keeps, ja- keeps getting in the way for Jake's me. article, the headline, I've seen some strange things on a cricket field, but never have I seen that. When I was 43, no. <laughs> Speaking about his 65, yeah, so, yeah, I presume. That's right. I took, <laughs> I took strike at two, 
<laughs> I set the toaster for three that morning. It was Mandy hard to come by runs that day. Nah, he's, he's, he's done well, Jake. It was, hey, six in six. What, what else do you say? I mean, that, uh, don't say it's great cricket. I mean, absolute one of the greatest songs of all time. Mm. The Great Cricketer is coming live to a stage near you if you live in the mainland of Australia. Uh, Melbourne, December 20, sold out. Fremantle, January 4, sold out. If you live there or near there, you cannot go. You cannot come unless you get yourself a ticket. You can't buy them on the internet anymore because they're sold out. There are... As we record this on what day is it, Pezza? Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, 15 November. It's 1.30 in the afternoon right now. There are 20 tickets available for Adelaide, December 14. December 14, Pezza, is the first day of the Australian Test Match Summer in Perth, sure. But if you're in Adelaide, the game will be going on at the same time as we take the stage, which means we have to do a, a review for the day's play after that live show. That could be chaos. But more importantly, December 14, Adelaide, there are right now 20 tickets left. So that is about to be sold out. Sydney is at Janu- is, uh, is on January the 2nd. Brisbane, the day after, January 3, the Princess Theatre in Brisbane, in Sydney. It's at the End Mall. Where do you get these tickets, Pezza? Where would, where, where would one go to purchase these remaining tickets, these finite tickets left for the Australian TGC Tour of 2023-2024? Gradecricketer.com or just go onto the internet and type in the keywords that pertain to what you want. Grade Cricketer, Tickets Live 2023-24. You're going to find it's fairly high up in the old SEO there. If you're a fucking idiot and you need this bit of information, it's gradecricketer.com forward slash live dash shows if you can't navigate the internet. That's how it works. Adelaide, 20 tickets remaining. Sydney, January 2nd at the end more. Our Brisbane, biggest show ever. January. It's our biggest show ever, Sydney. That's true. It's our biggest Be show part of it. ever. Uh, and then Brisbane the next day, January 3, at the Princess Theatre, where we performed last year. Support for The Great Cricketer comes through our patrons, patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. You sign up there for 5 or $10 a month. You're going to get the reviews uh, in your audio feed, which is now available on Spotify. We've been covering, of course, the World Cup just about every single day for the last couple of months. There is a semi-final preview already out, and there's also a semi-final two preview for the Australia and South Africa uh, uh, semi-final, which is, I think it's already on there right now. I need to check that with Charlie. Uh, there was also the World Cup final. Oh, Charlie. Uh, there's <laughs> there's, there's also that? there's also the yeah, it's up. final to come. Um, also, up. you get hashtag us, TGC Fridays, and so much more. And obviously, for, the, for our live shows, all of our patrons got early access, uh, pre-sale tickets to the live shows. So, uh, And, of course, we just thank generally our patrons for keeping us alive at patreon.com forward slash great cricketer. Pezza, the Archie Gray charity game is a game that's been going on. Uh, sorry, is a game that we've been talking about for the last few weeks, and it's actually yeah. on tonight. Tonight, we've been pumping it up. It's been awesome. Response has been great. The, the, if you're in Sydney and you want to watch a celebrity cricket match tonight, there's some great names knocking around. It's West versus Manly. All funds raised uh, go to the Mark Hughes Foundation, which raises money uh, for research into brain cancer. It also helps families deal with grief. Uh, grief. Archie Gray was 17 when he died from brain cancer. Uh, the guys who are playing tonight who you may recognize uh dan christian christian uh dan christian's involved christo that is uh who else we're we looking at uh jay lenton former blue star ollie davies just made 150 yep. uh, for new south wales to knock yep. over uh wa mm-hmm. there which we'll get to um ryan hadley a uh, new south wales player brett lee guys might have heard of him i think he played back in the day michael hooper um recently discarded wallabies captain um controversially and uh disgracefully uh will be playing and uh i have it on good authority that Steve Beaver Menzies may be coming out to bat with his Albion headgear on. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so oh, if awesome. you want to see that shit, mm. get down to Pratt and Park. I believe it's going to be on KO as well if you right. want to watch it from the comfort of your own couch. That's how right. many people are getting behind it. And if you'd like to donate, uh, that's right, Mark Hughes Foundation uh, is where all the money is going to for funds into – Research into brain cancer. Uh, so, been really cool to get behind this. I hope that uh, they smash everything that they wanted to, um, or break all the records they wanted to break, and raise all the funds they wanted to raise. On the show today is Peter Siddle and Matt Renshaw. They are both in studio. We've already recorded those, and they uh, no. I'm just going to say arrogantly, they are both excellent chats. It's fantastic to have these people in the studio, in front of our faces, us in front of their faces. Uh, really enjoyed that. So, uh, so please do skip to that right now if you don't want to hear us talk about the World Cup, Meg landing the WBBL, the Sheffield Shield, or or hashtag RTDC. 
which is also in this show. But to the World Cup right now, Pezza, let's start with Nasser Hussain. He said <laughs> okay. this. He said this. <laughs> it's hard for England because of the timing of World Cups on the back of an Ashes series, Hussain told the UK's Daily Mail. There's so much focus on the Ashes that come the end of it, you are mentally exhausted. You look at players like Chris Wokes and Mark Wood, uh, and both were mentally and physically exhausted. So it's about planning across formats. We need to give each format equal care and attention all the way through. It's hard for England with the timing of a lot of these World Cups at the end of the UK summer. So it's about never taking your eye off any format because if you do, sides will go past you when you think that you're okay. But that is not easy to do when you've got so many players playing all the time. What a remarkable campaign this has been for Australia. That's the bit that seems to be missing. Now, there's some context to this. So, yeah, NASA's obviously said that, uh, you know, it's hard for England because yep. you're mentally exhausted. <clears throat> now, I know when, when we talked about this off air, I raised this with you, you actually – your immediate reaction, such as your respect for NASA, is it like, well, no, that's that's um, a misquote somewhere along the line. I, th- right? I think I think he I think of him so high. I think he's the best commentator. Well, yeah, yeah sorry, he's my favorite commentator. He's in say. your conversation. He's in the conversation that I have by myself. Yeah, <laughs> facing the corner with a sock around me. <laughs> <laughs> Always with the sock. <laughs> Never even used Where's the, sock. the belt. Anyway. So uh, I, I was just thinking, like, well, that ha- this has to have been taken out of context. Like, mm. there, there must be more to this because I, because uh, otherwise, this is a rare, rare miss. Well, from the in, great in, this, in the sense that he says it's hard for England because so much fo- focus on the Ashes, you're mentally exhausted. It begs the question: Well, how have Australia managed to um, have a regional legal World Cup? Because I believe they participate in the Ashes. Now, mm. that was a, a sentiment echoed by um, Damien Martin, who also shares many, you know, of, of our views. Uh, to which NASA res- has responded, yep. saying, I try not to react on here on Twitter, which is also the words of a smart, wise, normal person. Normal person, yeah. Um, but, I have a lot, uh, uh, but I have a lot of respect for Damien Martin, a few others that have been taken in by an out-of-context quote that did the rounds, probably without watching the whole vodcast. So then he links to a Sky Sports Cricket vodcast he's done with yeah. uh, Ian, you know, Ward. Ian Ward himself, Owen Morgan, Athens. and Mike Atherton that goes for uh, something in the realm of 47 minutes. Yes. <clears throat> the thing is that the quotes occurred in the Daily Mail, yeah. not in the vodcast. And, and these aren't out-of-context quotes. They're not quotes that have been spun or connected to something else that have been said in a, um, in a different sphere. Mm. It was literally a Q&A yeah. um, interview with Lawrence Booth who edits Wisden, a man of great repute in cricket mm. journalism. Yep. Uh, and the, the the quote was a straight answer to Lawrence's question saying, if England looked at this tournament and thought they could learn for next time uh, and thought what could they could learn for next time, what would the biggest lessons be? And it was the straight answer to it. Um, so I don't know uh, why, why, why we're saying this is out of context. All you know, I don't, And we're talking about it way too much. But No, well, uh, mate, well he, here's the thing though, is that NASA's right. Oh, yeah. We, we can get into the uh, <laughs> the the substance of what he's actually yeah. saying. I mean, he's claiming and it's taken out of context, but... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I disregard that because that doesn't seem to be the case. But, like, but what, what he is saying is true. It just misses that, like, Australia have done outstandingly to make a semi-final when... Oh, well, oh, look, I should also say that England's World Cup that, that has happened... Australia was so close to having the exact same World Cup mm. and it's just so happened that we've been talking about the performance of the team. Is Australia playing that well at the moment? It doesn't really feel like it's a team performance, but they've just had outstanding, outstanding individual performances which England haven't managed to uh, execute or accrue across the tournament. Um, but what he says is largely true for the reason of the underperformance of the side. Now, with Australia as well, you think about the difference in players between the red ball side and the white ball side. Australia actually has um, – th- those, those teams are much more similar um, than the England's team. Yeah. England's team have um, – who they have? They have – It's about five blokes. Wokes, Moen Alley, Root, Stokes. Bairstow. Bairstow. Wood played most of the games. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, you, so I'm saying six there. For Australia's team, it's almost identical except for uh, Zampa and Stoinis. Mm. Um I think all the other guys did play every game. Mm. Is that right? English? Like, yeah. English, sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Even though Kerry, I mean, Kerry started the tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah. English. Um, so whilst I think Nasser is right, I'm sort of looking back at this at the same time and thinking like, fuck, maybe 
the fact that Australia has, um, as you've been saying, chested themselves into a semi final is actually an unbelievable achievement given how much cricket they've played. Maybe. Um, that's not NASA's point, but that's that's where I'm sort of thinking about it. Yeah, I think the NASA thing's just funny because uh, when England does badly, uh, it appears to me like a, a lot of the people in and around the England cricket ecosystem close ranks around the team and don't really call out the shit that's gone on. Right. Right. Uh, so, and and we've all been gaslit by English cricket, um, particularly for the last three or four <laughs> months about shit that's been happening. So yeah. it's kind of funny when he's like, yeah. they're too tired. No, that's out of context. No, I'm looking at the words. Yes. It's like, no, I look at this vodcast. That's not where I said it. <laughs> no, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still the best commentator going around. Mm. Both things can be true. You're a convict. Yeah, yeah and I'm a convict. So that's all good. <laughs> Henry Berry, baker's boy. Yeah. Stole, stole some bread. Mm. <clears throat> anyway, change his name. Different issue. Uh, My answer is done for tax evasion. Yeah, right. Well, that doesn't yeah. surprise me. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're right. Like, both teams are cooked. We we saw the Aussie boys in between the Ashes and the World Cup. They were fucked. Yeah. You know, and, it, and you're not actually – it's the worst public excuse to offer, we're tired, because oh, yeah. you're a – um, well-paid, mm. uh, travelling professional athlete. Mm. The public will not accept an excuse that you are tired, even though you are a human and you are, and you, that you are you have not gone to the World Cup mm -hmm. uh, like somebody who is prepared to play at their absolute peak. You know, like these guys are at the top of their game. They are people who are trained to peak at the right time. Yep. Both teams went have gone to this World Cup, just getting it done. Yeah. Right, so yeah, with what like I think both teams are extremely tired. They had they could have had similar World Cups. The answer is that either you know, well, really, what we're getting at is Australia's better than England at cricket. Is that is that what we're doing? Well, people, I mean, players talking about being tired. What about the podcasters? Yeah. Well, indeed, I mean, we're, every, we're basically every in the mines, single you know? tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, know? we we've done and it shows. <laughs> we we've done Border Gavaskar, yeah. IPL, yeah. Ashes. Exactly. What about the podcasters? The Asia Cup. How? How can we insert ourselves into this? Hashtag ICC Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Wasted Saturdays. Starting new properties. Merchandise. Live show tickets. Books. Merchandise. Um, okay. So let's, let's, start with, um, let's start with the Australia South Africa semi final, which is uh, tomorrow night. Well, it's supposed to be anyway. There is supposed to be rain forecast for the next three days in Kolkata. Where Cyclone's the game is going to win. So the Cyclone's going to win. As is predicted. Um, so Australia getting there, it's it feels like it's been. Um, I can't believe this is. I mean, I can't believe so much has happened. I mean, Angela Matthews got timed out. Glenn Maxwell hit the greatest yeah, audio since we, last time, since we last talked on this um, audio mostly program. Uh, so Glenn Maxwell is two hundred and one. I was just saying to um, uh, Sid Laurentia, one of them before, just like I've actually watched those highlights now multiple times. Such is my enjoyment that I get from it. And it's been a while since I've seen highlights like multiple times. I, I, I've actually elected, I've bought in to buying to, to watching those highlights. Um, such is the joy that it gives me just from watching his innings. It's fucking amazing. Amazing innings. 201 red. Cummins 12 off a million or whatever. Uh, he's blowing up um, in the dressing room about his strike rate being ruined now in his career. He's thinking about himself. He's thinking about his IPL deal, as we all are. Um, Glenn Maxwell couldn't walk. He went full salmon. Finch is in the dressing room afterwards saying, never go full salmon in an Instagram story. I'm into that. Mm. Just absolute joy and happiness that mm. Glenn Maxwell has given us in this one innings. Yeah, it's so good that he got to – put together his magnum opus, you know, his Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam, his Michelangelo's David with a bigger penis. His Viennetta ice cream. <laughs> absolute pinnacle. <laughs> the absolute pinnacle of desserts. <laughs> the pinnacle of desserts in the 1990s <laughs> in my house. Either that or vanilla ice cream with iced magic on top. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now we are The talking. little spoon just hitting, oh, it, hitting yeah. that crusted over ice oh, magic. Tick, tick, tick. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> so many people have comp compared that innings to ice creams in the 1990s at our yeah. houses. I found a bit of the um, the chat around where does it rank like a bit of a comparison is the thief of all joy okay. kind of gear. I'm happy to like sit, you know, what Sachin, Sachin said, greatest ODI innings ever. I'm happy to take that just and just, and just play on. I, I find all the other stuff a bit like, nah, you know. Let it, let it be what it is. It's no comparison with Test cricket. You can't talk about like uh, how's it, how, how do you compare like s swiping it with with your feet in concrete mm -hmm. to like 
Steve Waugh getting hit in the back by Kurtley Ambrose. Mm-hmm. Like you just, just, you just did it there. Different sport. They're just different sports. Yeah. You know? Sure. But I actually, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, yeah. A, it was, I'm just so glad that he, he put together the, like the apex of the thing he could do. Everyone's yep. talked about his talent for so long. Yep. And then he did the thing that he will be remembered by forever. What about the time Maxwell did that? It's yep, grandkids true. shit. True. And it's so, that's just so satisfying. So satisfying for him mm. just to be like, yeah, I, I now have done the thing that kind of um, has actualized the ceiling, you know, that, that I have had. Mm. So uh, it's, it's incredible. And now, you know, Australia also has something to talk about irrespective of what happens in the semi. <laughs> oh, FEMA and the AFL trades. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't be talking cricket. <laughs> um, Mitch Marsh, a few days after that, scored 177 red, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Against Bangladesh to, to steer the side home so easily in that game. Steve Smith supported him with 63 red, I think it was, at the same time. And so to that end, the conversation right now as we, as we go to where is who's going to play in that semi final? Is it Marnus versus Marcus? Is it uh, is is Steve Smith in that conversation? Or probably not. But um, but that is that is the main concern right now about who is going to play for Australia in the semi final. Marnus Labuskakni or Marcus Stoinis? Well, presuming everybody's fit, like they've had this issue all through the tournament, but someone has either fallen off a golf cart or, um, you know, become concussed or got vertigo or um, rested and, and wicket kept in warm ups. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Pr- providing that everyone happens to be knocking about for this game for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Um, You're around? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really funny one, you know, like. Marnus feels more part of the Australian cricket furniture than uh, yeah. Marcus Thoinus, but I'm not sure that's actually true in the white ball team. Uh, I, I, th- mm. I think Ponting said through the week that um, were Smith not to have recovered from his vertigo ahead of the Afghanistan game, uh, that Marnus would have been dropped. So at least leading into that game, which was uh, two games ago, uh Stoinis is in the best 11 um, of yep. the team and the way they want to play. Yep. Uh, I think that was the case before the World Cup as well. I think that's, you know, I think Stoinis is in the team for all, with all of their plans and, mm. what, yeah, what their best 11 is. Um, I feel like you play Stoinis if you need more with the ball and you play Manus if you need insurance with the bat. I'm not even sure what. Australia does need against South Africa. I feel like South Africa's main danger is with the bat, but whether that works in Kolkata on a ragging deck, I yep. don't know. So, like, it, it's uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, and, mm. and I really feel like if you remove Manus's fielding from the conversation, it's like probably leans more towards Stoinis. But like, like, so funny with Manus. Like, for me, uh. Cricket in 2023 is just so like white ball cricket is just so different to whatever we grew up with. Yep. You know, it's it, uh, you talk about different sport, different like you know bigger bats, different lingo, different approaches to things. Uh, you know, but but like I, when I watch Manus, I feel like he is the um, actualization of everything we were taught as a kid about what you should be as a cricketer. Like he's so classic with the way he bats. Mm-hmm. He's so resilient uh, when he bats as well, and his fielding is is literally what. Every, any coach would want from its own player, uh, and he he's good for five to ten runs saved a game. He can t- he can make you wickets with his fielding. Mm-hmm. So he's almost like the prototype kind of player that we used to lord in the nineties. You know, in in ODI cricket, like uh, we're so much better than everyone in the field. Mm. He's only he's one of the few Aussie players who are actually living up to that standard. So I don't I don't know what the conclusion is uh, for this at all. You know, think about how Australia wins the game, and it's probably Zampa takes four wickets. Um, I mean, that seems to be the way for Australia to win games anyway. But mm-hmm. when when Australia won their first two ODIs against South Africa in the series leading up to this World Cup, obviously South Africa then won the remaining three, absolutely dominated Australia. But in the first game that Australia won by three wickets, mm-hmm. that was no, sorry, they was, was there three wickets. That's when Manus and Agar. Came, yeah, yeah they, they batted. That's right. So, yeah. so Cameron Green was batting. He got concussed. Then Manus came in and batted eight and scored eighty. Yes. with Agar, and they were seven for uh, they were about seven for one hundred and ten, mm. chasing two forty or something. Mm. And then they those last eighty not or something. Like right, that. that's right. And then the other game, Australia won by about one hundred and twelve runs. Zampa took four for fifty mm. or something like that. Zampa's obviously just so critical. So if it is spinning in Calcutta, 
that seems to be an avenue to for Australia to win. I'm not really sure if Australia can rely on like it's it's not really a question of like oh which one of these two players is going to win us the game. It's mm. almost like if Australia loses, they should have picked the other one. Of course, so, it's, oh, it's all, <laughs> so absolutely it's, they can't win yeah. for sure. I'm like you know I'm not really sure these two are necessarily the match winners. Do you know what I mean? I, well, I think Stoinis would be upset, just generally speaking, his performances. He hasn't scored a 50 in ODI cricket for four years. Now, his role on the team anyway is not to score 70s and 80s. It really is to score 30s and 40s as quickly as possible and then bowl some chop out overs as well and then just be generally uh, a leader in the team and just uh, good around the well, group and also next on fielder. Yeah, he was opening the bowling, but then they went to Marsh the other day. Oh, you know, he's coming back from injury stoyness. I don't know what that whether that plays into yeah. uh, fact. Oh, I mean, there's been so much conversation about it. I've, it in an attempt to bring something new to it, uh, if you don't um, if you don't pick stoyness and you go in with four frontline bowlers and you've got to find ten overs out of Maxwell, Head, uh, and who am I missing there? Um, Marsh. Marsh. Yeah. Uh, you know. And, and one of the, the quicks gets taken down, mm-hmm. you, you're in trouble, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you're in trouble for options there to get through your 10. And the one thing I want to raise, which feels sacrilegious to raise, is that like the quicks kind of need to step up a little bit. Wouldn't mind something out of the quicks. It's difficult to bowl on the power play, particularly first innings. And I don't know if the ball's been moving around a bit. We've seen India be able to do it mm. or whatever. But like um, – you know, it'd be interesting to see how Andrew McDonald's viewing the quicks uh, and whether they need the extra insurance of Marcus Thornis's overs. Mm. Because if De Kock and, and Bavuma and Van der Dussen and Markram, uh, those guys are able to class it, are able to take down one of the quicks, then mm. Australia's going to be short, you know, of overs and mm. guys are going to be under a lot of pressure. And I feel like, you know, batting is South Africa's strength yep. in this situation. So, oh, but fuck, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> the last game in Kolkata, it was like India's sort of uh, scraped their way to 320, which is about the as unders as they've been. Yeah, you know, on a turning deck where yeah. Maharaj was one for 30. Yeah, uh, so and, and then they then they got bowled for 80. And they got bowled for 80. So you know, yeah. is it low scoring? What does that mean? You know, yeah. do you need minus a skill with the bat? Both mm. offer things. Mm. I, I I I just don't know. It'd be. I don't oh, know. don't you know? Yo, you don't. What, wow, mate! Oh, isn't it obvious to you? Wow, yeah, I'm sure it'll be obvious to people in the comments what they should yeah. what should be done. I mean, it's absolutely, it's absolutely ridiculous that you haven't called this out. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't they, matter. They, 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 they better they better win or there's effigies. South Africa's going to fuck it up. It's going to rain, and then they'll be put in a circumstance that you know it's just unbelievable. And yeah. then you know that's just the way it goes. Yeah, they've never made a final in ODI or T20 how, cricket. How is that? Like all the players. The, the um, unbelievable talent coming out of South Africa. They've never made a final in T20s or ODIs. I read, I read Dale Stane the other day saying that they hadn't talked, they haven't ever talked about what happened in 2015 with uh, Grant Elliott. Good. Yeah. I'd That's be surprised if they ever talked about what happened in 99 too, and they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> As we said in the preview, still, yeah. Mark Waugh missing that run out is one of the Biggest misses of his life. But yes. again, kissed on the dick, yeah. run out. Fuck, it looked good. Still look good. If you want our review, you can go and find that uh, on YouTube or, of course, just uh, just sign up to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash great cricketer, and you can get the audio into your feed that way. Um, okay, let's talk about India and New Zealand, which is tonight in Mumbai. <clears throat> uh, here's something that caught my eye, Pez. <laughs> this uh, is going to be important analysis of the game, I, I suspect. No, uh, not 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 really. Uh, but it's an article from Lawrence Booth. Uh, the Booth is in again. Yeah. Uh, and oh, I see. And he says the Cricket World Cup has been plunged into an astonishing row amid claims the Indian board have switched the pitch for the team's semi final on Wednesday against New Zealand in Mumbai <laughs> without the ICC's permission. <laughs> and they could do the same if India reached Sunday semi final in Ahmedabad, where three of the four group games have been played on different services from those on the schedule. Uh, it basically goes on this story to uh, suggest that the uh, what's what's the what's the guy's name Atkinson? Uh, is it? Hang on, let me let me find his name here. Adam uh, Andy Atkinson, Andy. who is uh, the super uh, supervising of the governing bodies. Cons- sorry, <laughs> pictures of the ICC events are prepared under the supervision of the governing bodies consultant Andy Atkinson, who agrees in advance with the home board which of the numbered strips on the square will be used for each game. Now. 
it has been uh, it has been alleged, I suppose, in this uh, in this article from Lawrence Booth in the Daily Mail that uh, Andy Atkinson is not happy because there's been a number of pitches being moved around uh, uh, based on the BCCI's wants and needs. No, um, so we all know that is impossible to have happened. And uh, but I'm just telling you what's just some information that's out there. If you want to if you want to uh, look into that, um, that's fine. But yeah, that's what's that's what's happening with the deck. So uh, when New Zealand win this game, it's going to be just um, just just remarkable stuff. Well, who do you believe, BCCI or Daily Mail? It's a good showdown. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever suits my narrative, to be honest. Now, hang on, there could be a misunderstanding. Is it yeah. around all of this? Um, okay. so once again, I'm sure we'll be told in the comments exactly yeah. what that is. Yeah, but um, I, I mean, shock me. Uh, the ICC have a certain way of doing pitches. The BCCI have their own way. Yeah. Some would say they're one and the same. All yeah. good. Uh, but, you know, we're crying more by raising yeah. that. But if you don't raise it, you're sucking off. You're so cuck, cry, yeah. cry more or suck off. That, that's the choice in modern cricket media. Cry more or yeah. suck off. I do remember the current coach talking to the pitch staff middle of a test match earlier this year and also the and also the ground staff wearing BCCI kit. <laughs> no, that's a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. They misunderstanding. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter because uh, India are just absolutely sensational. They go into this into the semifinal heavy favourites, though, of course, as we were talking about in our preview beforehand, Pez, that's... Uh, New Zealand have knocked India out in the last four uh, in the last four attempts of, of knockout competitions across different formats. They obviously won the World Test Championship final. They obviously won the semi final in 2019. Yes. I'm guessing there must have been two other occasions in knockout circumstances in T20s or ODIs where they have knocked out India. So uh, there are definitely some demons there. As we know, New Zealand, they are all very nice guys, but there are some skeletons there. There are some skeletons in the closet, hence the team name, the Skeletons as we've been calling the last couple well, of years. So can the skeletons knock over India? Well, of course. I mean, look, look at what happened to Henry Nichols this week. They've, they've nothing. Got, they've, absolutely nothing. Uh, <laughs> no, they've, they've, they've all got skeletons. Uh, sorry, yeah. did you see me scrolling my phone? I'm just seeing what's going on, on <laughs> online. Um, I'll play you in a second. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for the, uh, the, the big news from this week, which is that it, um, mm-hmm. after, after us um, being fucked in the face with information that Ratchan Ravindra's name was a portmanteau of uh, Rahul Dravid yes. and Sachin Tendulkar, his yeah. dad comes out and alphas <laughs> the entire cricket community and says, no, it's not. He says, what the fuck are you talking, are you talking about? about? We just realised six yeah. years later, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, that's about it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are pretty desperate to tell us desperate. that it was, it was honouring yes. uh, those it Indian was, players. It but was almost a, like it was on every commentary stint as well. It was in mm. every publication. It was all over the internet, just... Absolutely, yeah. Well, I, I, I wonder about how Ratchin's feeling about his dad in that situation because Ratchin wasn't correcting anyone. Ratchin's sitting there scoring hundreds at the Chinnaswamy going, yeah. well, I wouldn't mind a game for Bangalore. Uh, you know, now why why does he one. say this the day before the a day- semi-final? <laughs> That's right. What's he doing? What's he playing at? <laughs> this is going to be a 10-wicket win for India now. Ratchin Ravindra would have been cheered to the crease because yeah. he is one of them in many ways. You know, in many ways, he's sort of a, an amalgamation of two of their greatest players. In many that's ways. What, that's, what, yeah. that's what the crowd was thinking before. Chin-chin beforehand. restaurant, son god Ra. <laughs> Or is, we've always said that. <laughs> Ray Hadley and Leland Chin. <laughs> but now, <sighs> but now, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's all over the shop. I don't know, man. Cost them. Uh, I think with the whole Ratchet and Ravindra um, kind of saga here, it's just a lot of people who've wanted to say the word portmanteau. Yeah. Don't you think? Almost definitely, yeah. Almost definitely. Don't, don't you think? Mate, what a tournament. You know, like, uh, I feel like um, in, I'm just in football terms, in, in soccer terms, that you could have, like, someone have a breakout tournament at a World Cup because you didn't get to see them, you know, like you, you didn't, like the, 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 the inverted commas foreign leagues, that being any league apart from basically Serie A um, or the Premier League in the 90s. That, so that wasn't like broadcast across the world. So mm-hmm. like, so someone from Senegal or something like that, ah. you know, could have a breakout tournament of the World Cup. Who the fuck is this guy? There was no, um, there was no like highlights packages yeah. underneath some. That's what it made it so great. It was it was pure trappings. Yes, it, it was pure novelty and trappings. Who is this player? I don't know how to say his name. I don't know about the gate. I don't know how what he looks like. Yeah. But he's really good, and yeah. now he's going to be worth fifty. Pounds, which was a lot of money. That was a lot of money. Nineteen ninety three for a transfer to Inter. So Ratchet Avenger, who's literally played Test cricket for New Zealand, he's uh, he's apparently got a very good first class. We're going to say apparently because I'm not going to pretend like I knew his story, no. but um, or point actually, of pride that you don't actually. <laughs> as is my right as an Australian to disregard the bottom corner of the mm. earth there, the beautiful country that is New Zealand. Mm. Um, and so this guy's just had this breakout tournament and it's like the, it's like a throwback to 
my experience of like you know football and soccer in in, in the nineties were mm. like who who and where is this player come from this magician? Mm. Are you saying he's like a nineteen ninety eight oh, two thousand and two Cleberson? You know from uh, finally from Brazil. someone said it. <laughs> he's an El Hadji Juf. Mm. Two thousand two as well. Mm. A mate of mine. Um, I remember in, remember that game. <laughs> <laughs> Great reference. Uh, a mate of mine in 2002, we were playing a soccer game after. We, we stayed up the night before to watch Senegal and France. Right. And uh, obviously El Hadjou scored and yes. uh, did a famous dance around his top. That's right. And the next day we played a game of soccer uh, against the school and our coach was refereeing mm-hmm. and my mate scored a goal, 17 years of age. He's actually, his wife just gave birth yesterday. Shout out Ben Sean, third child. And... Uh, he scored a goal and he's in year 12 and he ran to the corner and did the same yeah. dance. Yeah. And um, th- our coach just sent him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bringing the racist. school to disrepute, you know. Yeah. Further disrepute since then. But, um, yeah, it's gone on. It, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, you know, it was okay. well, well, it's okay for El Hadji Juf. was not okay for... Ben Shine. Well, that game is tonight. Um, um, Senegal versus France. I'm leading. They're playing a replay from 2002. <laughs> so, <laughs> see if Benny Ratchet Revenge is Cleberson. <laughs> That's harsh because he sort of struggled after that at United. <laughs> 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 and aren't we all relieved that Henry Nichols has been cleared of ball tampering after uh, looking like he rubbed the ball in a helmet in a game? I think it was uh, <laughs> was it Auckland against Canterbury. Right. I think was it's, it. I think was it was. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. Oh, don't you know? He goes. Nope. Um, Disrespect New Zealand. Come on, come on, the Kiwis. No. Come on, the skeletons. Are you are you prepared to say on air right now that you're supporting New Zealand? In Fucking oath, I am. One hundred percent, I yeah. am. One hundred percent. Only because if n- not only if India don't win the World Cup, the the team that wins this World Cup, if India don't, it would be the greatest achievement in ODI cricket since the last thing that happened. Of course, which was good. I was, since like the last I mean, thing I can remember, it, like every minuscule advantage has gone towards the home team as is their want and indeed right. And need. John Wright. <sighs> but if the Kiwis did this, how funny it would be. Yeah. And also I think that the two most interesting stories for the teams left in the World Cup to win the World Cup, without question, South Africa and New Zealand. Those are the two best stories. India's got their own story. I get it. there. Yeah. Australia, look, I hope it happens because that's a team that I support sometimes. I find but like, a very interesting story. But <laughs> a, a six World Cup, no worries. Sounds good. Get, get on with my life. <laughs> I'll check the scores in the morning. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Smudge got 80. Beauty. Mate, I was uh, like just being casual here, but um, we have uh, um, an agent in India who uh, helps us, Shiv. Shout out to Shiv. And I was talking to him yesterday and uh, – I said to him like, "Oh, he's like, he's like what, what's the buzz? What's the buzz like in Australia for the World Cup?" I'm yep. like, "We went and got a coffee yesterday up here in South Melbourne, and <laughs> back three pages were Aussie with AFL, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know." Um, yep. I'm like, "Oh, are people, like people are into it. It's it's a World Cup, but it's still very much keep an eye on it." Like he he couldn't believe it. Like uh, he, yeah. he was just like, "Mate, it is like it is wall to wall here in India. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, like it is. It's fever pitch in yep. India, which I think is awesome. People love cricket over there. That's but awesome. I, we'll have Indian uh, viewers watching this, listening to this, and uh, they might be disappointed that where we won't be sitting down supporting India in that game. But yeah, just got to understand that it that'd be the most AFP decision like of ours to fuck that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like come it's, on it's, the Kiwis. It's, yeah, it is. It's just come ki- on. It's Kiwis. It's Nisham. It's, yeah. it's um, vengeance. Yeah. Underdog stuff. It's, yeah. d- it's deserved. The last dance. If they play against us in the final, don't bother yeah. turning up, nah. but yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Pick up your silver medal for the silver ferns. That's it. That's a, that's a different sport team of theirs. <clears throat> anyway. That's the cricket. That's the that's the uh, that's the preview. Uh, it feels like about a month and a half ago, but Andrew Matthews got timed out, and then since then the Schle- uh, Schlenk has been suspended from the ICC uh, mm. for government interference. So Alan Donald left his uh, bowling coach position at uh, Bangladesh. He left it. Yeah, I didn't see yeah. that. So I did see his quotes afterwards, where he said uh, the administration um, said they'd like because because afterwards he was just like. Um, that's not that's how we play. Ass. I was almost yeah. about to come on the field and say that's not who we are. Yeah. And then the administration's like, well, we'd like him to come and explain his comments. He's like, I've made my comments in the media. You can look at them there. And then he, and he quit, which is- Yes! Like, White lightning! Yes! That was his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Just call your Jets. That was his nickname. Okay? <laughs> that's what you say racially. <laughs> White lightning! Come on! <laughs> 
couple of pillowcases over my head. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, I was putting things over your head. Um, yeah, he did. He he was. Uh, so That's he, fucking he, alpha. He's out of there. Do you know what's not alpha? Kusil Mendes apologising for not congratulating oh, yeah. gr- congratulating Virat Kohli on his forty nine hundred. So the background, background of that is ahead of the Sri Lanka and Bangladesh World Cup game at the same time, India was playing against whoever Kohli got his hundred, his forty ninth ODI hundred against to equal Sachin Tendulkar's record of forty nine ODI hundreds. It had happened at the time. Now Kusil Mendes is in, is in a different part of the country altogether. He's having a press conference for bef- the match before. Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Mm. A journalist, I believe, anyway, of Indian origin. I don't, I don't actually know that, but I presume Why it was. Why is that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know every single person. Um, so then asked him just like, uh, Vrat Kohli's just scored his 49th 100. Do you want to congratulate him? Kusil Mendes, who is the captain at the time because the uh, previous captain, Shanto, had left the tournament with a hamstring injury or a back injury or, or some shit. Um, so Kusil Mendes is then looking around being like, uh, not, not really. Why would I do that? Uh, and then obviously since then he's caught absolute pelters. And then I saw yesterday or the day before he said, "Look, I copped a lot of heat for that. I probably should have. I probably should have um, congratulated Virat Kohli. It's a great achievement. I just didn't know. It's like fuck that man. Why the fuck would you have to apologise for that? It's fucking ridiculous, absurd. I feel. I feel. I actually feel for him that he felt the need to apologise because of the overwhelming hate that he would have received, especially on the internet, which is just fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I was. I was going to congratulate Virat. Um. Well batted. Well batted there. So it's it's just it's just true. He's had to retract his his he amusement. Had, he's had to retract his uh like non um like his opt in. No, what like uh, sorry. He's had to retract his decline mm. of someone asking him mm. if he'd like to congratulate Virat Kohli. Yeah. Like it's just like, are you going to take a moment to kiss the ring? Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. you're an international cricketer, but like, yeah. how how's this yeah. press conference gone five minutes? Yeah, without somebody mentioning what Virat Kohli has done. Yeah, it is a lot of the um the coverage over in India. If anyone's been to India and and watched Star Sports, it is mm. really is a yeah, like it's the Kohli show. Rohit a close well, second, then yeah. it creates its own little ecosystem of Rohit versus Kohli with yeah, yeah, yeah. weirdos online debating that. There was yeah. a controversy the other day where a, a, a graphic briefly appeared on Star Sports um, previewing the semi-final, which used the faces of Virat Kohli and I think Kane Williamson. Yeah. Um, yeah. The um, the <clears throat> criticism being that Kohli's not the captain of India, but neither is Williamson, right? So it's uh, it's probably fine, but people were just like, yeah. well, it's, that's a joke. Like yeah, uh, yeah, it yeah. should be Rohit Sharma. Mm. But uh, over there, it's 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 wall to wall Coley uh, yeah. right now, and yeah. it does seem. I think Barney Rone before this World Cup mm. um, predicted that th- this entire thing was going to be coronational for Virat Kohli. Yeah, it does yeah, appear yeah. to be like that. That's the that's the short price bet of what is actually happening in this uh, World Cup. Like right? what, what is happening is like yes, yes, a coronation of mm. of one of the greatest, if not well, probably the greatest ODI player of all time. He's the greatest ODI player of all yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so that's all well and good. It's yeah. just like other teams play as well, and it's like, why would you have to? Anyway, whatever. Do they? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then Sri Lanka's been suspended from the ICC. Uh, oh yeah. So basically, so basically the the um, after Sri Lanka were knocked out of the tournament and knocked out of the twenty twenty five Champions Trophy, whatever the fuck tournament, by finishing ninth instead of in the top eight, they won two games out of nine. So they finished ninth, and then the board, the entire board, was sacked by the government, and then the ICC have said. You're not allowed to do that. You're actually yeah. suspended from our um, – what is the ICC? International the Cricket Council, yeah. So we're, you're suspended from our council for six months. Is that what it is? Yeah, you on, it on, a, on account of like over-government interference yeah. in cricket matters. Uh, so right. my understanding, I think, from reports is that uh, – the Sri Lanka Cricket Administration essentially requested this themselves, um, like that re- requested their own suspension to commence the, the cleaning up of whatever the fuck needs to happen. Okay. And others have raised the uh, – and I'm just piggybacking off what others have said here, but mm-hmm. raised the um, potential uh, contradiction uh, or hypocrisy that, uh, one, um, the Taliban is heavily involved in the selection of Afghan um, officials and players right. and that um, – in India, it is a fact to say that uh, the head of the BCCI is the son of the um, Home Minister. Uh, so, 
there appears to be a connection between that wow, and the Pesa. government. Wow, <laughs> wow, okay, mate. I, I don't, mm. I don't wow. believe that is a, a major leap. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> well, you really go. You really went there, okay. Uh, and I think uh, Arjuna Ranatunga made comments to this effect now we're talking. as well. And all I want to say is he's looking fucking awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a big alpha. The, yeah, but the rig is, it's slim. I've like not seen ju- the rig. We just spoke to uh, Peter Siddle, yeah, who yeah, is yeah. A, a picture of Svelte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a picture of Svelte. <laughs> Bo Van Svelte. <laughs> so, I just saw your eyes glaze over. Look to the corner. Um, <laughs> But uh, I just uh, Arjuna Rantugas had some choice words uh, for for Jay Shah and the BCCI once again. Uh, yeah. Do not shoot the messenger. Um, he wow. just has, and I all I could look at was how svelte it is. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then I just and then you get into a ninety six. How good was that team? Oh, the ninety six team. We're starting to talk about it. Yeah. In the, and then and then some sirens outside our yeah. studio. Wee-oo, wee-oo, get, wee-oo. Sorry, give us your hard drives. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but he's he's looking great. Silver Fox there, Ranatunga. He's putting some pictures up today of uh, yep. Aravinda De Silva in the ICC Hall of Fame. Aravinda yeah. De Silva. What a player. Now we're talking. What a player. Yeah. Cover drive, pads, yeah. offies. Grillless helmet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dudes rock. Dudes will just sit there and say players' names. Welcome to our podcast as well. Sign up. Um, Push Pakamara. Yeah. Guru Sinner. Guru Sinner batted once in 1995-96 out here with... Uh, um, like Michael Slater's speed dealers on. <laughs> oh, 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 fuck. Mm. Fuck. Mm. Mm. Uh, okay. Make uh, your segue. Uh, hmm. Meg Lanning retires from <laughs> Let's do it seriously. Uh, okay, yeah. one of Australia's greatest ever all. cricketers has retired. Meg Lanning has retired from international cricket. She played for 13 years. She captained for 10 years, anointed into that title at 21 years old. This is via Alex Malcolm in ESPN Cricket Info. <clears throat> 241 matches for Australia, including six tests, 103 ODIs and 132 T20s. She will go down as one of the most successful captains in cricket history, having captained Australia to four T20 World Cup titles, an ODI World Cup title, and a Commonwealth Games title. And she captained her country in 182 matches over the last 10 years. Obviously picked as an 18-year-old 13 years ago. She's 31 now. Uh, and uh, that is, uh, that's a great shame that Australian fans won't get to see her play anymore because that's just I – mean, the, the record is just – like, what do you say? I mean, this is Hall of Fame. This is walking to the Hall of Fame stuff. Legend. Hall of Fame. I, I mean, I think there's a – there's a very good argument. She's the greatest. You're saying uh, goat goat stuff? A very, again, comparison, joys, thieves, no. uh, robbery. Yeah. But um, she, it's a conversation mm-hmm. that we could have right mm-hmm. now. But she's uh, going mi- to I'm going to miss her. I mean, talk about – look, when I think about Meg Lanning, I think about the commencement of the true professional era in Australia. Yeah. You know, her starting at 18, um, gun, weapon, legend, immediately yeah. going to be the greatest and yeah. proved it so mm-hmm. – uh, you know, off, off the back of an era where it was difficult for women to um, make a fist of, of cricket as employment. Uh, she came in as like basically a fully fledged professional yep. and took the game to that point. And she's really been the lightning rod for Australia's uh, complete dominance and the compounding safety we have all felt mm. where we can just kind of like take a look at the TV, expect Australia to be winning. Yep. And that's exactly what's happening. She's won every single thing. She uh, was the be- She's was the been the best bat of her generation, arguably the best bat ever. You're talking about serious goat statue gear. Yep. Uh, it's, reti- statues. it's statues. It's statues. It's statues. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 statu- it's a statue. It's a statue. It's a statue. It's a statue. And um, – yeah, the uh, I mean, and she chooses to retire at thirty one, and everybody wishing her all the very best uh, with what she wants to do. I'm going to miss her as a player. One hundred percent, man. Thirty one years of age is a young time to retire. Yeah, uh, as a professional cricketer from all formats, everyone's living their own life. So, um, fair play and play on. Uh, we've we've discussed off air. It's uh, interesting and unusual that somebody can. Uh, of that standing um, and professional standing can retire with um, most, uh, how would you say, like um, um, a- accepting that that there have not been a lot of um, 
um, of like detailed reasons put forward, but mm. um, it's it's play on um, as a normal person. If somebody chooses to do that, then that's what. Uh, that, that's what you've got to accept. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a brutal sport, generally speaking. So to be playing at the top level for 13 years and then getting to 31 being like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically done with it. I mean, I think, I think the words where she lost a spark for international yeah. cricket, it's an interesting language, I suppose. I, I mean, my, <clears throat> my my feeling with it was, it's like, oh, that's, that's really unusual because I don't, it's not like they play that much. You know, she's captain 182 times and she's been captain for 10 years. So that's 18 games per year for 10 years as captain it doesn't feel like it's that much obviously there's there's other cricket outside of international cricket though um i don't know it just it just surprised me there's obviously been a number of times where she has missed games especially recently after the commonwealth games in 2022 was that when that was she uh took time away from cricket and she was actually being a barista at a cafe in melbourne um she was I guess given every opportunity to play for the Ashes then pulled out of the Ashes even when she was captain in the Ashes just gone this year she pulled out in the last minute and that was um that was there was there was there was, there was no reason given for that mm. um if one does require a reason for these things so I don't know for me personally it just um it sounded surprising but uh you know normal life stuff uh, if you don't want to play anymore all good I just, she, um, might, she might have just looked around and gone you know uh, ahead of the ashes for example and been like I'll give my they might have given her every chance to be available for her and she's yeah. just gone I can't it's not working for me it's a long time on the train you know on the on the on the international professional cricket train and yeah maybe she maybe you know she's just like look I've I've had my I've had my fill of it, you know. Because when I think about reason. when I think about like a reason, I, I don't even know where to start with it. It's like, oh no, it must be something else. Like that that, that was my mm. instinct. Like, it must be something else, but I don't even know where to start with that, you know. So maybe it is just like, no, nah, I'm just burnt out. Maybe maybe it's just a thing that she literally said. Maybe I don't mind. Or a word maybe to, not. In, in in like <laughs> an adult, mature human way, I don't mind yeah. a world where we don't have to know everything all the time. Well, I, I need to know. No, I need to know every single I need thing. I got headphones on. Thirty eight. I'm, yeah. I'm in a studio. I do a podcast and I say players' names and then groan. <laughs> oh. Uh, statue <laughs> it's it's a statue and i don't need to know you know i didn't uh, i never really watched um women's cricket with obviously with the same details i do now mm. um but obviously straight and you watch with a lot of detail now well in 2019 i probably first started to to realize that this australian team was like really really good i know they'd won world cups for like more than a decade beforehand but um but then getting into that World Cup in 2020, obviously with the final, they packed out the MCG just about in uh, just before COVID happened, basically the last international tournament before COVID really hit the the world, not just Australia. Um, that's when I really started to take notice of how good it was. But then, I mean, Le- Meg Lanning's record chasing, especially just like, it's just, it's unbelievable. So many. Yeah, ridiculous. loves the chase. Oh, yeah. love yeah. the chase. Mm. Um, Struck at 90 as well, like when everyone else is well below that. She, she, she was like yeah. a level above everybody. Yeah. You know, I guess what I'm saying is that, I've come late to the party of how great some of these players are. Yeah. And I feel like I've missed out on great years of watching a great Australian yeah. athlete play. You know what I mean? So I've only, I've only seen the last sort of three or four years of mm. Meg Lanning. And it's like, ah, there was, there was 13 years before or yeah. 10 years before. Um, anyway, wish her well in her retirement. She'll be playing for the Melbourne stars and she'll be honoring her WPL contract. And I think she's also signed up with the hundred. I think yeah. that's a thing. So yeah. she's still playing her domestic stuff. Um, but uh, no more in the green and gold or indeed the Canary yellow, if we're still calling it that. Wouldn't uh, I mean, for she, Australia. She, you know, fair play retirement. It's all been called and everything. I'm just, just yeah. saying this from a, um, like AFP perspective, yep. um, she'd be a great candidate for like a SOS for all the Australian team if needed. You know what I'm saying? Oh like, God, don't just, do that to me. That's, yeah, it's it's uh, it is it's it's hard drives to say, mm. but it, it's some kind of World Cup or an Olympics or something coming up in a couple of years time. Well, you, you know what, mate? Even even beyond that, you remember like SOS co- landing. You know, do you remember a couple of years ago when the, when the, well, obviously the bushfires were terrible one year in Australia and they had that charity game at the Junction Oval and we saw Layden, uh, Langer and Hayden walk mm. out to bat together, mm. Ponting batting at three. Was yes, Macken I remember. Was it's burned into my memory. And I was like, oh, Sorry, my the pun. God. So good. Yeah. You know, so we, we might get Brian Lara in an Australia jersey? Yeah, I didn't like that. No. But I did like Brian Lara looking sultry in a, in a baggy green. Do you remember oh, that photo? Yeah. 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 Fuck, Fuck yeah. It. Yeah. Mm. Does Brian Lara have a house in Australia? He's, he's a, I don't Spends know. A lot of time I, don't, out here. I don't know his property um, status. Portfolio, that, is, yeah, I need to know. Yeah, yeah. Once again, do you know? Do yeah. you know his address? Do you know his house address? Um, he spends he spends time out here. Yeah, he so does. There you go. Yeah, mm, that's There's interesting. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments what his phone number is, please. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> let's let's go and talk to right now. Peter Siddle, a great legend of the game. Not just a legend, a great legend. Okay. In the same way, you can't just have a white shark. It's going to be a great white shark. Is it white shark? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Here's you the don't great have, white you shark. You don't have one. <laughs> you have a grape. Here's Peter Siddle. Today's interview is brought to you by Shane Watson's winning the inner battle. The man we're sitting with has no idea that that's the case. Uh, but uh, we've been talking about this book for a little while. Here goes. Mm. This is the book that um, will help you indeed, as it says on the title, win the inner battle. I actually have a reader's review this week. Uh, this is a perfect book for those frustrated batters who find ways to self-sabotage or who have roadblocks with their batting, whether it's getting out at a certain time of innings, concentration lapses, mental blocks, or being in a slump. The lessons apply for all players of all levels. Visit shanewatson.au to get your copy of winning the inner battle. I think the review today. is actually from Peter S. <laughs> <laughs> No way, that's too obvious. P. Yeah. Siddle. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, my batting needs a lot more help than that. I think. <laughs> um, well, the man we're sitting with is, uh, is, is the owner of a, a pretty good first up test delivery to Gautam Gambier. Uh, sorry to Gambier fans in the comments. Um, <laughs> owner of a hat trick on his birthday. Um, it's your birthday next week. You didn't know that. And um, <laughs> owner of an immortal line on our intro to our podcast, which is you better get nude and get in the shower or we're throwing all your cricket gear away. Um, that's right. It's Peter Siddle, Sid's in studio. Welcome. Yeah, it's great. It's lovely to be here. And mm. Yeah, look at this place. Beautiful in here. A bit, a bit different than the last time we caught up in person. I think it was uh, just ahead of the Lord's Test in 2019. Yeah. And uh, I think half the conversation was you referring to how much we stunk of alcohol yeah it was pretty much and yeah it was it was a bit all over the shop you looked pretty hung over that morning so <laughs> I, I made sure it was a nice early start for you guys and um but yeah this is lovely you guys have really made it haven't you no not really it's all uh it's all yeah. fake um <laughs> how good i mean how good do you look though like every time i see you now like mm. i just think um i see like it's you look it's pure it's vegan it's cycling yeah it's lean you know, like, have you found the elixir? We're, we're roughly the same age. Like, have you found the elixir of life? Yeah, because when you, I'm, you look, you're a picture of health. Yeah, because when <laughs> I when I think about Peter Siddle, like, because mm. like, you've always been so good to us, like, not just like mm. when we've done recorded stuff, but just generally when we've seen you around, you've mm. always been very friendly and affable. But when I think about Peter Siddle, I mm. think about you know, like the the wood chopping, you know, boy from the country who had a yeah. surf necklace. I was going to say the shell necklace. Don't forget yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you were and you were one fifties, and you were rapid, and you yeah. were aggressive. And now he's you know he's a mammal. You know he's yeah. Yeah. Middle aged man in lycra, yeah. uh, harsh yeah. the middle aged stuff, yeah. but uh, you know, you know, that's true. We're pushing, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're next week. Fit, we're pushing. fresh, you know, you got got some new chompers, um, and and like, so I don't know how to like place you in my life. Like, what mm. what happened to Peter Siddle, the boy from the country with the surf necklace? Yeah, it's disappeared, hasn't it? Yeah, mm. I think, um, yeah, I guess life changes, and yeah, I went through lots of transformations along the way. Mm. Um, it's almost yeah. like things are better now, though. Oh, mm. yeah, they're, they're definitely a lot better. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, about to turn, You've aged gracefully. About to turn yes. 39 and still playing. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely helped, yeah, with the longevity. Um, like I said, yeah, a lot of things changed. Um, gave up the booze um, mm. a long time ago. I was close to getting sacked, so... Um, Guess that helps. Was actually, yeah, yeah. It, it actually turned out to be a pro pretty uh, wise move then, so... Are you looking like a like more than 10 years sober? Yeah, it's 11, 11 and a half years now. Ah, so, good for you. Um, awesome. Congrats, it's man. It's been a long time. Um, but yeah, so I was yeah, close to being sacked in the late 20s and here I am now um, in, the, in the late 30s still playing. So um, not long left. But yeah, I think yeah, a lot of the different changes over the time and have definitely helped and, and played a part in yeah, playing the game that, that we all love. I think that's the thing. We're all, we're all big cricket fans. I love playing the game. I love bowling the ball. Um, so yeah. Haven't got long left, um, so try and make the most of it. And the healthier I can be, means afterwards I can be, I can be also be healthy and and like you said, get in the lycra and ride my, ride my bike more. <laughs> oh, it does 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 look healthy? Like, yeah. like, like it, it's uh, so it's twenty twenty three. You're thirty eight, thirty nine next week. Um, you're about to play a first class game in Melbourne. Or uh, I mean, look, the squads haven't the teams haven't been announced yet, and we we can't discuss these things. But um, you made your um, your first class debut in two thousand and five at age twenty against the West Indies. So you've been playing pro cricket for just about half your Bloody life. Yeah. Um, those guys at that time were talking about like Mick Lewis, Brad Hodge, uh, you're against Chris Gale, Shiv Chander, Paul. Mm. Um, like what, what's been the favourite phase, you know, of Peter Siddle? Like the young tearaway, raw, quick, the sort of precision honed fast bowler for your country or like the – you know, um, senior, elder, wise, and old pro. You know, <laughs> d uh, distributing your knowledge to young guys. I think all of them. Mm. I think they all have, yeah, a, a part to play, and I, I, I've definitely enjoyed every part of my life. 
yeah, and the way it's been. I think I loved those early days. Yeah, just running in, had no idea what I was doing. I was just angry, like you said, aggressive, and just wanted to bowl fast. That's all I knew as a, as a young kid, and I really enjoyed those times. But like I've said before, is I knew that wasn't going to last if I stayed like that. I didn't have a lot of tricks, so I'm like, I have to change a few things up. And then, yeah, obviously the transformation into you know being a bit more consistent um, and, and and smarter with the way I played. Um, has definitely has definitely probably helped my game the most. As much as I love being fast and sort of scaring blokes and being a bit more aggressive, um, like I said, once I made those changes, slowed the pace down a bit, but got more consistency and skill. Um, I've definitely had a lot more fun playing the game, being able to work batsmen out and and doing that type of thing. So I think all stages have been enjoyable, um, and I think yeah, mostly to be able to be doing what I'm doing now, I think is what I love the most. And I spoke to you before we jumped on air and. Being able to, you know, a bit of playing, but coaching as well for the next couple of years and working with a great young crop of young fast bowlers at Victoria. Um, you know, being in the change room around some of my old mates, Scotty Bowl and Marcus Harris. Um, Trav Dean, again, has been amazing. So, yeah, all this coming back to Victoria um, this season has um, has definitely, yeah, made me some made me the happiest I've been in a, in a long time, which is, yeah, which is a good thing to have when you're closer to the end than the start. I remember um, I was just looking up the the length of your career, the the depth of it, Sids, and the longevity. Because in in my head, you're mm. so like twenty eleven, twelve, thirteen, like that's that's where you sit in my head. But then you played in the last Ashes in twenty nineteen, which I remember that clearly. But then you were playing ODI cricket. Your last ODI was four years ago as well. Was that in in India? In, no, it was here. It was here. It was, it was yeah, against India. It was against India. Right, right, right. Um, that's that's recently, and like obviously, be playing for the strikers still. I'm oh, sorry, we live with the Renegades now, but you yeah. have been playing with the strikers. Like the the longevity of it, it's fucking amazing, Sids. Yeah, I think, and I've, I've probably looked at it more now. Now that once I did retire, I think, um, and yeah, you talk about it, and I think yeah, there was, I was eight and a half years between my ODIs right, when, right, when I came yeah. back for that series. Yeah. Like I just concentrated so much on Test cricket in the early days that yeah. I sort of just forgot about white ball cricket to an extent and, yeah, focused on that. So I didn't play a lot until pretty much those years when I went to Adelaide for Big Bash mm. is when I started getting back into white ball cricket. Um, had, a, had a lot of success over there with them as a team and as a, as a player and just learned a lot of things. And, um, yeah, to be able to like you said, sneak back in and play that Ashes series, be able to, you know, pl- play another Ashes series, which is what I had a goal for. I sort of, I'd, I'd planned two years in advance to try and do everything I could to be ready for that. Whether I get picked or not, I knew I was old. Um, I just had to go over to England and and, and go well in county cricket. Mm. And I did that for a few years. I got, along the way, I got a few messages from JL saying, you know, just keep taking wickets, just keep bowling well. And that was about it. Whether I got picked, I had no idea, mm. but... Um, but yeah, so I did all that to try and be right for the Ashes, and then somehow I got picked from England to go and play in the UAE. <laughs> was when I came back in. The, I was like, out of all the conditions, yeah. I thought I was going to get picked. Yeah. That wasn't the place. <laughs> I thought I was going to get selected for Australia again. Yeah. So yeah, to get back in the Test team around that time, um, just be back around the squad, and um, but yeah, the Ashes was the pinnacle. I just yeah. wanted to play another Ashes series, be a part of that, um, which was amazing. And then yeah. Those one days were just a bit of luck, I think. I just, yeah, I, I, yeah. a few blokes were resting, had been injured, so I got the sneak back in. But um, it is long, I think. Yeah, the boys laugh. They talk about, you know, they've played, you know, 30, 40, 50 first class games, and then my mine pops up on the screen. It's like 220. And, <laughs> um, they have a bit of a giggle about that. But um, I think that's when I notice it the most is I sort of don't really know, I know now, but how many games I've played. But yeah. The boys always bring it up as soon as they see something right. about that. That it's like, gee, I have played yeah. for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you just had yeah. that, like you're at that phase in your life and your career where you've been around for so long that like statistics start to amass in a mm. way where people are like, oh, that's really interesting. Like I look like, you know, you're a guy now who's played cricket for so long that like you have a connection to both, you know. Mick Lewis and Campbell Kellaway. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you, you have spanned <laughs> that life, like. I'm curious, like, what so now that you're a, a seasoned pro, a wizened elder, distributing advice, like, can you compare and contrast the advice you would have got 
as a 19 year old with like Mick Lewis and Brad Hodge and Warney when you got into the squad <laughs> with what you're giving out to like, you know, Fergus O'Neill and Mitch Perry, <laughs> you know, like, is there, a, is it much the same or, or has it changed a bit? No, nah, I think it was a bit more brutal when I first came on yeah. the scene. I yeah. think the, 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 the old school tough, um, yeah. brutal ways of sort of, you know, footy and cricket, how it was back in the day is definitely how I started. The change room was a lot rougher, tougher. Um, is that good? Do you think that was good for you? Or I think so for me, yeah. yeah. I wasn't, you know, like I didn't take things to heart too much. I sort of just copped it on the chin and, yeah, okay, I'll go do that and just, yeah. I'll just go and do it, yeah. <laughs> Run in, bowl fast, hit him. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'd, go, I'd go and do it. Yeah. Um, Is that whereas, what you say to Fergus? Whereas, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Hit him. Yeah, yeah. Ferg, Ferg, Ferg hit run him. in, bowl fast, hit him. <laughs> so, yeah. And then he goes, I don't bowl that quick, mate. I'm, 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 a, bit more, I'm a bit more skillful. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, de- it's, def- it's definitely changed. It, ha- it has changed. And, and there's still guys that you probably say that to, but... Yeah, I think the game's changed a lot. I think there's a, yeah, there's a lot more chat about the skill based things and how to get blokes out rather than just that old way of run in, do your thing, bowl fast. Yeah. It's well, what appeals to it? Like, I feel like you, you know, you're a chameleon in that way. Like, you really have evolved in your life. You're basically saying, I liked being young and that guy. And I also like talking about skill stuff. Like, is there is there an essence to you, though? Like, is there a part of you? Are you like that old guy now? It's like, ah, oh, this isn't the way it was in my day. I, do you pine, you know, for the old days a little bit in any way? It was uh, it was better then, wasn't it? Things yeah, were was better. it better? Yeah. Well, if, if I still bowled fast, I think it'd be better. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now that, you know, I've got, got to that crafty sort of, that bowler that. You might, you might off his now. I enjoy, yeah. <laughs> they're down off spin now. <laughs> Todd Murphy's bowling just as quick as me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, I think my my big trick like has always been how to get the batsman out, like yeah. on the field of play, like away from the ground and talking techniques and stuff is something they'll have to learn over the over time. But I think my yeah my big uh, key is always and skill has always been how to get them out, like how to work them out where they're moving. So I love talking to the guys about that kind of stuff and so like yeah whether it's Fergus and Mitch Perry even chatting to Scotty even when I was down in Tassie like Scotty and I still chatted a lot about different opposition and stuff um international games when he's been around so I like talking about that that side of cricket and I think that's that that really excites me um yeah just how to get blokes out I love obviously getting wickets and um yeah that skill I think is a skill in its in itself and um, I feel like, yeah that that's something I'm I'm good at so yeah I've been able to pass on that and help the help the guys out that I'm playing with now these younger guys and hopefully they can learn a little bit and and fast track their game to yeah all, all I want to see is yeah you know, Mitch Perry you know putting on the baggy green one day that'd be um quite amazing mm. I think most people associate you with uh well first of all a hat trick on your birthday obviously um but just Test cricket generally you know and like played in so many great. In so many great test matches, so many great Ashes series, home and away, to be fair. But I'm um, just looking at this summer, Sids, and with Pakistan and the West Indies coming out again, like it's going to be pretty flat. And I just think, Lopez and I were talking before, like it just feels like the Big Bash just has to be such an important part of the Australian summer now because that's where cricket is going, generally speaking. And uh, people's attention spans with tests is less and less. And, you know, all cricket is going towards more laddering up to, what, to the IPL, essentially, right? So... I mean, do, do you do you feel that as well as a player? Like, I mean, because obviously with the Renegades now, great years at the Strikers, but do you feel like the Big Bash needs to have more of a central role in our summer, looking like you know the test, like the our best players should surely be playing in the Big Bash, right? Do you think so? And I think yeah, and I, and I think they will be with the changes that we've made with the you know obviously the season a bit shorter. Um, you've got those windows now before the Test series and then after mm-hmm. that will get those players. Um, for a short time, which which mm. would be a big bonus, mm-hmm. um, but d- definitely, I think uh, the re- the reason we're making the game shorter, we wanted to get attract more people back to games, yeah, less home games, so you can you know that people aren't forking out as much money as a family, all those types of things. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we want. We want those. Mm. We want the big bash getting back to it to what to what it was a few years ago before sort of pre COVID yep. um, times, and the crowds were big. I was lucky enough to play at Adelaide that probably had the best you know yeah. average crowds over the years. Yeah. Um, we got great support there. It's a great stadium. So I think that's what we want. I think the, the smaller window also, you know, attracting some of these over, overseas players. Mm. And we've got great overseas players coming again this year. Um, hopefully they come and stay for the, <laughs> for, for the time they're meant to. Um, but, yeah, so, like, as a, yeah, back at the Renegades for me, like, to have, you know, Quinton de Kock coming out this year, um, amazing. Yeah, obviously, awesome. we've seen what he's done in the World Cup Fuck, yeah. um, to date. Um, so, yeah, to have him out... Got Majeed back as well. Mm. Um, 
So getting those types of players back in the big bash is going to, you know, draw in the fans. And then the local players. The local players are exciting now. As much as we, we miss those test stars, mm. our T20, like, we've got a great um, home stars, like, mm. that are playing all the time. I think, you know, you know like Nathan Alice, probably a perfect example. Mm. Great shout. You know, yeah. The, yeah. the stuff that he does. I've played with him down in Tassie the last few years. Like, he's just unbelievable to watch mm. and, and play alongside. So you've got guys like that. You've still got Sean Marsh. You know, running around, Finchie's still going to be playing a part. Mm. Um, you've got plenty of local stars to support as well. So I think, yeah, this summer it's probably going to be the key. Like you said, the test, you know, the tests probably aren't going to be as attractive yeah. against the opposition we're playing. Um, so we'll get a real feel for what people are feeling about the Big Bash and if, yeah, if mm. they're back and they're going to be packing the stadiums and mm. um, and supporting. But um, I think, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an exciting summer for the Big Bash. Yeah. You um you, you mentioned Quinton de Kock there. Let, let, let's talk World Cup. Um, mm. Are you watching? Um, are you into it? Do you care? Uh, <clears throat> do you think we'll get the semi done? I'm not watching because I don't like watching cricket. So that's uh, that's <laughs> one. <laughs> I care. I check scores. That, 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 yeah. That's about yeah, as far yeah, as yeah. I go. I, yeah. I, I check uh, scores. Wake up in the morning and yeah. then I watch Maxi's highlights. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I don't really care too much about it. I, I want Australia to win. I'll check the scores. Um, but, um, yeah. Do you think semi? Do you think a semi final for Australia is like par? Like it's a, Australia's done yeah. okay in the circumstances, or, uh, or I think unders, by or? not not having to face India in a semi final. If we're playing India, you'd probably go, yeah. If we get mm. there and we lose, then mm. yeah, we've done well. But not having to play them yet, um, you'd, you'd expect in. You know, we've got to make the final. I think mm. that's that's where it's at. I think we we probably are the second best team. At the at, at, at so far, it's going to be. We know it's going to be hard. But if we whoever plays India, we know what the wicket's going to be in the final. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think you've got to make the final. Um, and I think yeah, the way they've gone from the start of the tournament and how they've set it all up, that they're in good form, they're going well, and we've got plenty of match winners. And I think that's going to be the difference um, in the semi. You mentioned Maxi just before that innings. I've actually. I've actually watched those highlights three times, and I say yeah, that I've watched with them multiple a little as well. Bit yeah, of that's concerning. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> just from a social perspective. <laughs> <laughs> How do you talk to a woman? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maxwell, <laughs> no feet movement. Yeah. Six. Yeah, if yeah. anyone knows, just let us know. Yeah, yeah but um, I like uh, mate. That innings was just. Oh, I just. I'm just laughing at it. Like it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It's just. It's so good to watch. Like there's just so many unbelievable shots. <clears throat> Coupling in a few things here, you obviously spent some time with Maxi when he was at. Uh, well, he's still at Victoria, as are you. Um, so, like, how did Glenn Maxwell come into the side when uh, when did Glenn Maxwell debut in first class cricket for Victoria? Do you know any uh, idea? It's a, uh, uh, yeah, over ten uh, years ago. Yeah, like a yeah long okay. Time ago, so. so it's still like that, like that Vix mentality where we just want it to be AFL, obviously, uh, and also like he's he's doing his reverse sweeps. He's he wasn't playing quite as eccentrically as he did against Afghanistan that night. But how, how did Glenn Maxwell go in like the early days of Victoria, just trying to do some funky stuff? Uh, under that old tutelage. He literally batted the same way. Like him and I batted, he made a 50 down at Will in, Will in the shit and down in yeah. Tassie. And I can't remember exactly if, I don't remember if it wasn't the fastest, but it might've been the fastest Victoria. It was like 50 off 19 balls. And his first ball was a dot. Um, <laughs> and it, like he, it, we were miles out of it. And then, yeah. And like you said, it probably wasn't as, you know, um, stylish and you know, right. all the old fancy yeah. stuff yeah. back then, but he just hit the ball like, Far. Yeah, he whacked it, yeah. and um, and he still does that now. And I think it was like like watching him bat the other night. Like the things he can do, his hand eye. You watch him on a golf course. He yeah. smacks the ball. He hits big draw. Like he does all the they you know the, the cool stuff. Mm. Yeah, and I think and, and that's just what he likes to do. He likes to entertain. Um, we know he's gonna you know fail at times and be a bit inconsistent. Um, but he's a genuine match match winner, X factor, and he's always been that. I so think. if you're bowling to him in the nets at, at Vic training, right, at mm. the MCG, and he like tries to ramp you or like bat left handed, like there's no way a young Peter Siddle buying near 150s is copping that in the nets. No, I'm, I'm probably going to try and hit him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and, there, and there might be yeah, in the nets. In the nets, you can let one slip too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Little full Doesn't toss. Oh, sorry, Maxie. Toss at the chest. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's, it's, it's going for that Yorker. Yeah. It's going for that fast I'm Yorker. trying things too. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's trying also got things. Also yeah. yeah. um, <laughs> So, yeah, you, you, you do everything. But he's he's always been like that. He commentates yeah. in the nets. He smacks boys around. Oh, he commentates. Yeah. Oh, that's going to wind you up. It does. Yeah. It does. He's a good mimic, isn't he? 
Like, uh, like he's yeah. really good at um, looking like other players. And yeah. I know when he did a live show with us in Birmingham, he yeah. answered half the questions pretending to be Justin Langer. <laughs> so he, um, <laughs> he's just a very talented guy. He's very talented. He, he is. He's talented yeah. at, at yeah, most yeah. things. So yeah. he's um, he is a different cat. He is a different cat. But that's what happens. It's usually the people mm. like that that you know have performances like they did the other night. And yeah, the part was when yeah he he wasn't moving his feet. Yeah, he, he couldn't move his feet. Yeah, they yeah. were stuck. Yeah, um, and he was he playing was, golf. And like, he, yeah, yeah, and he was. He, he, he was sort of grow hands. into that though, right? Like, like I just get the impression I don't know him particularly well, but like I get the impression he would lean into that idea that he could still hit sixes without moving his feet, and he probably like was quite turned on by that prospect. Unlike mm. other guys, would be like, oh, I, I'm I'm out here. Yeah, mm. yeah, that would have yeah, hundred percent. That excited him more than mm. going out there the bat at the start when he gets that beauty. Mm. Yeah, nearly, nearly, yeah, that's what everyone forgets. That first ball was an absolute seed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just missed his outside edge, just misses off stump yeah. and bounce a metre short. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's things like that that happen. And then when there's a big great innings, and yeah, he's just he's phenomenal. Like mm-hmm. the, the shots he was playing were amazing. Um, but they're not things that he hasn't practiced. That's the other thing too. I know footy players talk about soccer players that they 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 practice weird things. Yeah, and he's he's Podcast. done that stuff in the nets. Yeah, mm. um, so you don't you're not. Super impressed. You're like you're amazed a bit, but you're like, well, I've seen him do that stuff before, mm. uh, and he, and and then he's done it at the big stage. So just yeah. just with the semi final coming up, I know you're you're obviously watching really closely. That much is clear. Um, <laughs> Smith, <laughs> Smith, I know he's a lot, but like Smith, Manus, mm. Stoinis, you know, three has to go into two. Who's your best mate out of those three? And who are you sacking for the World Cup semi and why? Sean Abbott must play. He's <laughs> not even in the three and then you've, you've thrown him in. Well, Stoyne's one of my close mates, so um, yeah. yeah. He has to play, doesn't he? Because he's your mate. Because yeah. he's your mate, yeah. yeah. So who's and best then, mates and with Andrew McDonald? And, 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 then what's, <laughs> yeah. and then what's his old start, uh, his old saying? They're nervous, we're calm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, we need the big fella out there, yeah. don't we? Like, we're, like, we, we know he's a man of the moment, and yeah. so we, we need him. Yeah, we need him. Um, that was that was actually against South Africa. Now I think that was yeah, yeah that was against South Africa. It was weighty. Yeah, weighty. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so those we need those type of boys, you know. So yeah. we need they need mm. those people. So we definitely need him in there. But thanks for coming, Manus. Anyway, appreciate yeah. your efforts. Yeah. Good efforts. Yeah, yeah. and thanks, yeah. Blade. And I think yeah, Blade. Manus just has to you know. Just, just, just relax and and, and carry the, carry the beverages for that game. I think, um, and they don't have as much spin, so that's probably you know it's always been our issue as an Australian side for a long time. That mm. lots of spin, you know, and we struggled. But we're playing another um, country very similar to us. They're going to have quicks. Um, so yeah, let's let's back the Stoin in. Mm. Give us a bit of bowling, and. Yeah, he's a good looking rooster, so we need we and need, we, we need attractive. Rooster he's, attractive. He's, he's sexually attractive, so we need that. Oh, well, I was just saying he's attractive. Well, like, I yeah, sort of had a yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no one said so. <laughs> yeah, well, that was just you. Yeah, that's just you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you've been watching? Just, we, what highlights you been watching? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's me FaceTiming Stoin. <laughs> well, Does he answer? <laughs> Shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> just a two two part here as well, Sid's. Uh, you'd know Andrew McDonald pretty well from playing coaching days. Um, We've not heard much about him recently, which suggests Australia's probably going well, doesn't it? Um, by the same token, uh, Matthew Hayden recently noted how interesting it was that no greats were involved in Australian <laughs> cricket at any level. So do you think Australian cricket's lacking greatness? Yeah, where are the greats? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm still playing. <laughs> 220 test wickets. Jeez, yeah. come on, man. So they come just, just recently, yeah, um, Australia won five or six in a row, then, then yeah. Doss came out and so said, it, uh, no, no, no greats, greats involved. Yeah, no, no greats involved. No greats certainly. involved. It doesn't seem to be affecting us. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I don't mean to say that yeah. five or six on the bounce. Yeah, yeah. in the in the World Cup semi, and yeah. um, he coached Pakistan, and, didn't it, he? and it's an issue. Yeah. yeah. Well, he said yeah. Doss said he he'd never coach Australia. I'm not sure never he was he was asked, but yeah. <laughs> no one asked. So him. it's just it's just his choice on that yeah. one. But yeah, yeah, yeah I don't. Th- yeah, what's it ma- like? What's it matter? Like, I think that's shown it's shown that um, over the years that you know we've had we've had we've had greats play. You know he pl- he played through the probably the greatest era, yeah. Um, and John Buchanan, I'm not I'm not sure his his cricket resume. <laughs> well, was it, quite, he, he, yeah, yeah. it wasn't very. It was very small. God, it must so, have been hard yeah. for, for Buck in that team. You so, know what I mean? Like how many blokes yeah. would have said to him, "How many fucking tests? How many have you fucking played? tests have you played?" Yeah, <laughs> shush, mate. Well, you, yeah, yeah. What did you ever play? What grade did you yeah. make it to? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. I think you know it just comes down to you know how you relate with the players um, and what the players need. 
And I think at that international level, sometimes, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty talented when you're playing international cricket. Um, so you just need a bit of guidance. And I think, you know, I played a lot of cricket with Ronnie. Um, we spent a lot of time batting together because he batted, he's an all-rounder. He stood at mid-off when I bowled. Um, his cricket knowledge is some of the best I've ever seen. Um, always knew from that early stage he was going to be a good coach. Um, and I think, yeah, his progression has been very <laughs> rapid. Um, but it's probably because of that reason that everyone sees what I saw as a, as a young player and a teammate. Um, that's what he's got. He's got good relationship um, with individuals, and I think that's that's a big key. Um, and, yeah, he's just a good man. So he's doing all right at the minute. I like the idea that you were playing with him and, like, batting with him, and in the middle you said to him, mate, you are going to be a great coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not much of a player, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you are going to be. Playing sort of okay. Yeah. H- how do you think I'm going? Uh, you're going to be a great coach, mate. <laughs> 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 but no, he, he was a very good player. Yeah, he his was. numbers were very good for Victoria. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He had great stats, bat mm. and ball, yeah. um, and played a few played a few test matches. Um, did very well. Yeah, first test match got his got his head head knocked off pretty much. His yeah. helmet was came mm. straight off his head and uh, was bouncing around. But yeah. um, no, he's a good man. Why do I why do I feel like Australia would be like forty five minutes of bad cricket away from people again saying that he's got to go or that Cummins has got to go or whatever? Do you know what I mean? Like there is like there is some truth to what Hayden says that like in in Australia we still feel so safe about coaches if they've been good cricketers like twenty years ago plus like yeah. and and you as a player must have dealt with that in the time that you came in you came in off the back of that great generation yeah do, do you do you feel their shadows lengthening over you when as a player and uh, over cricket generally yeah definitely mm. i think and it doesn't matter what like there's always something that will be picked up you know it's like the it's like the fat kid that's dominating but as soon as he <laughs> has that first failure it's like <laughs> he's too big <laughs> and it's like and it's like, yeah. I didn't know about Perfect. that, but Perfect. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. It, it, yeah. it comes up all the time, yeah. like in, yeah. in all different sports. Yeah. Like there's yeah. that one, yeah. you know, or Cosgrove you're, not, you're, not, you're not too slow. You're not yeah. too slow until, and, until you're too slow. Yeah. Like yeah. It, yeah. It, it's the same with anything that like mm. you are, you're only a, sh- a small amount of time away from something being an issue. And whether it's, a, you know, a coach player, mm. you know, captain's cop it up. Oh, you're a bad captain. Yeah. Why? What? I lost one game. I just won the last seven straight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paddy, Paddy might lose the semi, and then I oh, no, bad captaincy. That and it's like, yeah. But that's the thing. Like you have bad games. You have you know you have bad moments. Um. So yeah, it's always going to pop up. Um. And it's yeah, it's just about dealing with that, isn't it? And I think yeah, my gen- when I first came in, you're right. I came in at the back of the, yeah, all the legends retiring. So it's like, gee, how how am I really going to go? Like yeah. this, this ain't going to be great. Um. Mm. So we had some tough times. Yeah, you always cop it. Um, but you, you're, but you're, it was fun. You're, you're, you're saying, you know, a couple of you – have, you haven't got long left. They're your own uh, words. So are you looking forward to jumping into the commentary box and, um, you know, casting judgment on, <laughs> on <laughs> young guys? Spray, 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 just spraying guys yeah. and saying, like, oh, back in mind. Yeah, day. so I'm helping coach them at the moment. <laughs> yeah. and, and I want to see him play for Australia just so I can nail him in two years' time. <laughs> this bloke's fucking fat. Yeah. <laughs> He's slow. Like that. Yeah. I got hammered about being too slow, so yeah. I'll, I'll be straight under that. Yeah. <laughs> Fergus, you got to bowl quicker, mate. Like, that's, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not going to work yeah, at the not, next that, level, that, mate. That's, that's not going to cut it at the next level. Um, but no, <laughs> like it feels good. Yeah, yeah it must yeah. be amazing. I'll just, I'll just feed, off, I'll feed off the exact yeah, same yeah, things yeah. that I remember. I kept yeah. in the memory bank from when I was copping it out in the field. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I don't know. I, I literally, yeah, I, I don't know. I think, like I, I've said that, yeah, the next two years I've got that opportunity with Victoria to play a bit, coach a bit along the way. Um, so. I'll get a feel for if I like the coaching side of things. Um, I'm enjoying it at the moment. Uh, yeah, so I think having that, yeah, that that input to the younger generation and giving back and and helping them try and you know progress their game. I'm really enjoying that side of things. So I think the coaching will probably be more my thing. Uh, yeah, the commentary is fun. I enjoy the banter and stuff, but. I'd rather be doing the lighthearted yeah. stuff, having a bit of fun like this, and the mm. chats like this, than the the serious stuff. And um, I've seen enough people finish playing and then just go and pop blokes. Um, I've called them out when you know when I was playing, and they were saying stuff like that. So I don't want to be one of those guys. So might just be yeah, co- coach the next generation, help them along, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, enjoying enjoying what I'm doing at the minute. I just uh, I should have looked this up, up before, but uh, I'll just ask you raw anyway. Um, were, were you in the 2011? Did you play in the 2011 World Cup? 
in India? No, ne- never played a World you Cup. Never played the World Cup. No. They, I was in the first ever T20 World Cup. Didn't play a game. Sat on the sidelines. I think it was in England. 2009. Nine, I think, yeah. 2009. So, yeah, that was the first one. I just sat there on the sidelines. Yeah, carried a few drinks. There wasn't yeah. actually many games back then, so it wasn't really that exciting. Yeah. But, um, no, nah, no World Cups for me. It's surprising because, like, because you were such a, like, staple of the, of the Red Bull team and, like, the divergence – between Red Bull and White Bull wasn't that much, really. I mean, I suppose the bowlers, you came in time when the current bowlers are basically the bowlers. They've, they've always been those guys. But um, what, do you, what do you think it was? You, I mean, you played 20 you played twenty ODIs, two T20s for Australia, is that right? Yeah. But, like, you played – how many test matches did you play? 67. 60. 67. Yeah, okay. That's, <coughs> yeah, a, that's so I think surprising. It was around that time, it was like – so I played – I came in 2008, eight nine. played all the cricket then for, like, two years, plus playing everything, and then – yeah. I played the. I won the champions trophy in uh, in South Africa. Oh yeah. So I was in the side then. Sort of Brax went out, and I sort of yeah he mm. did yeah, his okay. needed. So I got that. That was my opportunity. Okay. So I came into the squad then. Um, but then it got to the point. Um, I got injured 2010, uh. the start of 2010. Um, and then yeah, guys like um like Ryan Harris came in the one yeah, day okay. side. Dougie Bollinger came in around that time. Even Clint McKay mm. was around there. Mm-hmm. Um, so when those guys came in, and I was coming back from injury, um, and then we sort of, and then it, then it moved into that back to back ashes oh, yeah. period as well. Yeah. So like I end up, they were going well in one day cricket, so I put my focus on just getting back in the test side, and then that came about the back to back ashes. So I put so much focus in in that three year period in the test arena that I that I sort of yeah just missed the the white ball stuff. Yeah. Um, and then those guys, and those guys were going really well. Like they turned into great white ball players, and then you had. Mm. Paddy Cummins, yeah, Starkey and um, and Hoff yeah. all coming into around the Aussie side, so they were great white ball players from the early age as yeah, well. Okay. So they came in as well, and they just wasn't a spot for me, and yeah. never played any state cricket. Um, so it was just all done. It's just, just, just timing, isn't it? It's yeah. Just, yeah, and it's funny I'm disappointed I never played a World Cup, but mm. I've always been a traditionalist and love Test cricket. So yeah, let's actually let's actually do this. Uh, we, we have another guest that's just arrived. Let's just make it happen. Um, this, this is live. Come come, come through, sir. <clears throat> come through, sir. Oh, <laughs> it's Matt Renshaw, ladies and gentlemen, who's uh, lined up next. We hadn't told anybody. Yeah. This is actually some Jerry Springer stuff. Uh, so I know Sid's got to go in a second, but we're going to talk to Matt at uh, twelve o'clock. But why don't we uh, just you know? Well, Sid said he can stay as long as he likes. He can stay as long as he likes. I don't even know you know what the relationship is here or anything yeah, like that. But strikers teammates yeah. played for Australia. Okay. Somerset teammates. Look at this. Yeah, we've been teammates yeah. a lot. Well, there you go. I hate spending time with him, so I I will leave and leave yeah. you too. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, it's it's Victoria versus Queensland tomorrow. You're both um you're both in the room now. Is it kind of is it a faux pas that you're even talking to each other like yeah. a bride and groom before a wedding? Yeah, and that's yeah. why I didn't want to I say anything. You I know, think it's a luck thing. Like he's not allowed to look at me before the uh, <laughs> before the game. So, yeah. yeah, and he's warm. He's warm blue too for the you know the, the old traditional. You got something blue. Yeah, something yeah. blue. Something, yeah. Borrowed, something, something blue. Something yeah. borrowed. Something you blue. can give me something borrowed later, but yeah. <laughs> Why does that sound sexual yeah, well, Even though yeah. it's not at all Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, You guys went there Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well uh, I think This is a very Jerry Springer Kind of moment mm. um, Do you guys just want to say One thing to each other Each before the game Tomorrow The, uh, the, the big one That everyone's looking forward to uh, Victoria Queensland At the MCG Just yeah. before we sign off For SIDS Yeah I'll probably just say Yeah Nick, nick the first ball This week Rather than <laughs> The 150th ball Or whatever you did The other week So that'd be nice I hope you bowl nice areas to make me leave the ball. I won't be bowling, so have you? Oh, uh, <laughs> wow, okay, Siddle's so not bowling. Yeah. Yeah. So they're playing with 10. Yeah. Yeah. I'll text the boys. Scotty's back, so I'm on rest duty. Good. They're looking forward to the ICC getting in touch now. Um, yeah. so and what's, what's the, the pitch, pitch doing? doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 haven't seen the wicket. It's covered. Yeah. Big bash, so no. Henry and, what, and, what, and, what, and what happened in that game? Sorry, yeah. you just you just raised that. What happened in that last game? You played the big bash the at MCG. One. Yeah, the Heat one. The heat one. Yeah. How, how did that I, happen? I saw that floating around. They put up highlights the other day, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't uh, <laughs> well, Peter Siddle, in these strange circumstances, thanks so much uh, for joining us, brother. Get back to the training. No worries. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Thanks very much to Sids. What a joy to have the great man in the studio. Fuck me, he's looking fit. Yeah. He's looking an absolute picture. Yeah. He's and he's been he's always been so good to TG. So he's he's such a friendly, affable guy. Really lovely. Yeah, normal, normal guy. Mm. Funny, polite, handsome. Polite than being the main important thing. So about WBBL, man. 
Uh, Beth Mooney scored 101 oh, yeah. off 61 against the Thunder for the Scorchies to win by 42 runs. That's Mooney's third WBBL 100. That innings took her past 400 runs for the season, which is nine seasons in a row. That's every year of her WBBL career passing 400 runs. Nine years in a row, 400 runs. In that game, Mooney and Sophie Devine added uh, their ninth ever 100 run partnership. Opening the batting. Uh, one more than Healy and Perry for the Sixers, who have obviously eight. So in the WBBL table, Perth are top. Sydney Thunder are second with a game in hand. Then come Adelaide and Brisbane in third and fourth, also with a game in hand on Perth. The Sixers, Sydney Sixers are fifth. Uh, they need to be just about perfect to win the last four in a row to get into the finals, one would think. They won off the last ball against Hobart the other night, which may well be crucial thanks to Matilda Carmichael's cameo at number seven. Oh, very well done. 32 off 21 to chase Hobart's 140 in the Apple Isle. Uh, that leaves Hobart sixth. Their three points adrift from Sydney Sixers in fifth. The two bottom sides are uh, – sorry, the two bottom sides are uh, the Melbourne teams, the Renegades and the Stars. So those bottom three, Hobart – Melbourne, Melbourne, um, uh, they're basically out of it. They, they, those bottom three basically can't make finals. Um, but uh, just a shout-out for uh, the Melbourne Stars' Millie Illingworth, who's buying absolute wheels. There was an article in The Guardian this week, Pez, about her buying 121 Ks an hour with this WBBL. Apparently she grew up idolising Jeff Thompson, her old, old man showing tapes of Jeff Thompson. Uh, she's only five foot four from Geelong, played Aussie 19s last year. Year, uh, or this year, this year even, because she's only 18. Yeah. Um, so uh, one for the future. 5-4 uh, bowling wheels. So yeah. to talk about bowling a sort of 130K. That, that's, the, that's, 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 that's the marker for for wheels. It's fucking quick. 130 is quick. I don't think anyone's ever bowled 130s in. Yeah. Um, well, since since speed guns have been brought in consistently in in, uh, in the women's game. Yeah, that's exciting. It's it's um, mm. it's it's good to see. Yeah. Uh, if I if I could, can I can I pick up on that Beth Mooney? Yeah, sorry, yeah, I was just running through the entire. Yeah, thing, no, no, yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's a great rap. Um, nine games in as well, or something like that. Eight or nine games in, and most play, teams have played ten. Right, uh, so Four, nine or ten. Yeah, yeah, out 14, of 14. fourteen games, right. taking shape. Yeah, um, six is coming. Um, yeah, Beth Mooney, hundred one not off sixty one. Um, to help the Thunder win by 42 runs, her third WBBL 100, always among the top run scorers. Now, yes. just one line, um, Beth Mooney told Channel 7, just stuck out to me. Okay. <clears throat> um, she was interviewed after making 101 red off 61. Oh. She said, I can assure you it wasn't easy as I apparently made it look. <laughs> <laughs> Moons, you've done it again. As you uh, once world again, class, everybody, world class. everybody this week is really doing their job yeah. on the grade cricket front. Yes, you know. Yes, Gareth Morgan, six in six. I was actually just looking after my young charges. Yes. I didn't want them to go through their pain. Oh, yeah. six and six. Okay, uh, okay. You know, Sorry, uh, you know, Jake, Jake Garland. Oh, mm. I'll tell you everything that happened in that game. So yeah. I started with sixty-five or sixty. <laughs> And now Moon's 101 red yeah. of 61. It wasn't as easy as yeah. I apparently made it look. Yeah. I, I, the way I say that makes it sound uh, a mm. little bit more arrogant than it is. She's mm. just chatting. Uh, yeah. But again, it's just a lesson. Like language. To, it's a lesson to anybody out there. Yep. If you manage, I mean, okay, Beth Mooney does something great every year. She's one of the best cricketers in the world. Yes. But, um, you know, if you do have some success on the cricket field, you've always got to talk up how difficult it was. Yep. Very, very simple. Uh, and do the reverse for anyone else who has success. Yes. Uh, so That's right. Um, I'm, I'm just really happy with that. I'm happy to see that uh, crack on. Australia have announced their squad to tour India later in December. So there's a one-off test in Mumbai. It's the first since 1984, not to be confused with the novel, um, <laughs> which starts on December 21. Uh and then there's three ODIs and three T20s, obviously, all in India. So the squad to go over there is Darcy Brown. Lauren Cheadle comes in just for the test only. Heather Graham, Ash Gardner, Kim Garth, Grace Harris for the T20s. Elisa Healy, Jess Jonathan, Alana King, Phoebe Litchfield, Talia McGrath, Beth Mooney, Elise Perry, Megan Schutt, Annabelle Sutherland, and Georgia Wareham. So a couple of stories in there is that, um, first of all, Kim Garth gets a gig, but not being in the top 30 uh, players in the in the WBBL, we were assured by uh, we were, yeah, we were assured by Lockie that she was thirty one. He <laughs> even showed me the document, but sort of the cursor was flashing on Microsoft Word. I'm like, you've just yeah. all you've done is confected a document, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, it was also a picture of the taking on the screen. And in the, the thirty one was actually just in like Instagram stories text. <laughs> we see, we see you, Lockie. We see you. He's one of the best. 
Uh, that joke was a bit of a stretch. Yeah, Lauren Cheadle coming in. Uh, so she debuted when she was really young, about maybe five, it might have been like five or six years ago. She's had horror injury runs since. Left arm quick. Um, so nice for her to to, to get a gig, uh, to get back in. Obviously, we've seen what Grace Harris can do, just chatting generally in the WBBL, breaking bats, hitting sixes. Um, Phoebe Litchfield into uh, one of her earlier squads. Uh, this must be for her first away squad. I don't think she was mm. in the – was she in the Ashes squad? I think, I think she might be playing for Australia Day. I think she was. She was. She, was. she played, yeah. My mistake. Yeah. Sorry, Phoebe. Uh, and then apart from that, I'm expecting uh, – oh, so Dar- Darcy Brown is also uh, recovering from a hamstring injury, so she's not actually playing at the moment, but she has been included in the squad. Also, Elisa Healy, who you would suspect is going to be re- the replacement captain given that Meg Lanning has retired. Uh, she was obviously – bitten um, horrendously by one of her dogs. Uh, so she's still like in um, plaster cast and stuff on her finger. Um, so, but she has been included in the squad as well, meaning that she's going to be fit to play, one would suspect. But a one-off test in Mumbai starts December 21. Having a look at that, I've got to say, Pez, that's going to be, yeah, we, cool, we, saw, we, saw, we saw great numbers uh, in the crowds just recently for the, what was that? What was that in? Australia went there, didn't they? Yeah, Australia went there for like a, a one-off ODI game, Did I they? think it was, yeah, in Mumbai. There's, a, 50, there's an England 000. women's game against in India as well as a oh, test. Oh, I didn't so, know that. So okay, see some test cricket. Hell yeah, uh, and also, also in Mumbai. Um, yeah, it's funny looking at this Aussie side. The names mm. are great. I still miss seeing. You know, the the there is some safety to like Lanning, yeah, Haynes. No, yeah, you know, Good but, that, but you know, that's a, this is uh, life. Mm. Sunrise, sunset, motherfucker. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Uh, Pers, do you ever get frustrated that you cannot watch certain live sports events because they aren't televised or available in your country? Yes. With NordVPN, I can switch my virtual location to a country that is showing said sports event I want to watch so I don't miss out and can watch the action live. Name a country. Name any country in the world. Japan. Okay, I'm in Japan, for instance, and I want to watch. What do I want to watch? What do I want to watch in Australia? I want to watch the MMA, but the Australian coverage of the MMA, and I'm in Japan. Yeah. You use NordVPN, you sign up to uh, you sign up to NordVPN, and you can change your location to Australia, and you can get the MMA, MMA coverage, the Australian coverage that you want whilst you're in Japan. Hassle-free. MMI. The MMI Rugby League Schoolboys Cup from the uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the 90s. That is particularly yeah, niche. Yeah, well, you might want to watch that. Now, again, it's Is Christo probably playing in that? He might be. Yeah. There could be more hard drives stuff, but there are some good players that come through there. You know, you St. Dominic's, you got you St. Greg's, yes. uh, Holy Cross, Holy Cross, Cabra Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a misspent youth for me. People uh, have also have obviously uh, been talking about uh, needing to cut back on spending and save some money whilst also protecting yourself online with NordVPN that helps you save money as, w- as well as protect yourself from cyber crime. If I can talk properly, I changed my virtual location and sign up for a subscription service via other countries and then pay a cheaper price, i.e. you could be signing up to Netflix whilst virtually being in Mexico, which is much cheaper than paying for the US or the UK versions, or indeed the Australian versions. Also, you can book flights and holidays via another country and pay less. So NordVPN essentially pays Mm. for itself with those savings. You can grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to the custom URL through the episode show notes. That is nordvpn.com forward slash TGC. You get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. nordvpn.com forward slash TGC. I think um, fair to say like NordVPN is is God-tier VPNs. Uh, I, I know yeah. it's been of use to us. I mean, we've said earlier, if you want yes. to get a cent, uh, and this is... Some people may want to do this. You want to get a sense of the way cricket's being covered in India, say on Star Sports. Yeah. Well, you might be looking at uh, yep. who we just talked to talked about there, yep. and uh, you know, have a look at the Kohli Rohit show and have a look at the highlights, which is just Indian success after Indian success. Yeah. Uh, so just another example of what you could do with it. You could it, watch Schoolboy Rugby League again. Yeah. Yep. If you want. Um, if you want. Um, I don't know if people can track you doing that, but uh, I guess I guess not. Uh, NordVPN.com forward slash TGC. Here he is right now. Here's Matt Renshaw. Very pleased to be joined by Queensland and Australia and Heat and some teams in England. Uh, hmm. Matt Renshaw. Uh, Renners, welcome to the Great Cricketer in studio. Yeah, thank you. First time uh, meeting guys in person, so it's always always good not to have that screen in front of me. I get to see what you guys look like in real life. Thoughts? Uh, happy there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I noticed you're wearing a hat. I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> I'm bald. Oh, okay. You're and not wearing a hat. Yeah, yeah but I've got, a, 
I got a good <laughs> better hour. I was outside in I the sun. I got a better reason. I was, I was outside in the sun. I walked here. No, because the the, the, the light bounces off my head. You know yeah. what I mean? And then like, yeah. and then I'll be talking to you, and you'll be looking at the top, uh, top of my head. Yeah. You know, so it's actually an I'm interview technique starting issue. Starting to do that now. Yeah. So I'm stop. Yeah. I'll look in your eyes. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Unfortunately, <laughs> thanks for thanks for popping in. Appreciate uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Renis, I know, I know. Uh, I've I've read your quotes about this. You you you'd be expecting talk about the upcoming summer. You know, you're um you know part of a three way bat off um for the test team, oh. and then you're going to say, oh, I'm not thinking about it, and uh, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And then we're just going to do that dance, and that's yeah. all good. So why don't we go to um. Why don't we actually talk about what's really hot, Shield cricket, yep. and what happened last game? Okay, no, yep. I, I want to I lead up to this if yep. that's okay. Um, <laughs> so just wait. Uh, close game against Aust- South Australia, three runs in it. Uzi gets bowled. He's absolutely salmon before that, by the way, as well. But um, umpires try their best. Um, absolute scenes <laughs> for the Redbacks. Now this is from um, Yahoo Sports. Trusted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> best yeah. of journalism. No, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a quote uh, from from Sam Goodman. Uh, Goodwin, sorry, to be fair. Um, this is from Sam. He says, Nathan McAndrew has revealed how a run-in with Matt Renshaw sparked South Australia's wild celebrations yeah, after talking. their thrilling Sheffield Shield win over Queensland. Mm-hmm. The Redbacks beat the Bulls by just three runs on Thursday with Jordan Buckingham dismissing Usman Khawaja for 114 for the final wicket. Speaking after the game, McAndrew revealed the South Australian players weren't happy with Renshaw's actions after his dismissal. After being caught down the leg side off the bowling of McAndrew, Renshaw walked straight into the Redbacks' huddle as he made his way <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> Renshaw, who appeared to have his head down and didn't see the South Australian players, bumped into the back of one of his opponents before walking around the huddle. He could then be seen exchanging some terse words with the Redbacks players, who told him the correct way back to the sheds. Now, I'll just finish here. Um, this is from McAndrew. He says, Matt Renshaw made a pretty interesting decision the way he tried to walk off the field earlier this morning, he told reporters at Adelaide Airport. He had a few choice words for us at that point, which was quite bizarre. You don't really expect to see that from a batter when he's got out. There was no chat before that, so it was an interesting move for him to try and stir that fire up. But they who laughs last laughs loudest. Response? Um, no. As as always, history is written by the winners. Um <laughs> I've had a few walk-offs from the Gabba where I looked down and I didn't look up. I had one against South Australia. I got run out for 94, hadn't made a shield 100. I was at the far side of the Gabba and I walked the whole way off without looking up because I was absolutely devastated. But, yeah, no, I walked off and just had my head down, walked into them, and then obviously they sprayed me, so I'm not going to just cop it. So I said a couple of things back. But What sort of things do you say back yeah, after you get what's, out? What's, what's, after what's, get what's, out, what sort of what things? What are you saying? Well, yeah, <laughs> nice, well, nicest and good catch. Yeah, um, no, it was yeah, <laughs> well bowled and good catch. Yeah, so. there wasn't much you could say. Yeah. Um, I realised what happened afterwards. I was like, oh. so yeah. you're you're claiming you did not deliberately walk through the huddle. Well, like, you could first do your ears not work. So in the first innings, I walked off, <laughs> and you'll love as I'm walking down the race. The security guard looks up to me. I think he's American or Canadian. He goes, "Yeah, that shot probably wasn't on with that field." <laughs> <laughs> and like. I was so rattled. I'm like, you stick to your job, I'll stick to mine. I was like, I didn't know what to say. I walk in the room and Uzi's there and I was like, I think I just got sent off by the security guard. <laughs> and they're like, what do you say? I was like, oh, I think he said, like, don't play that shot with the field. Like this American guy. And it was, he just walked straight out, like talks to him. He's like, yeah, he probably was just trying to lighten the mood. And so the rest of the week was always, oh, trying to lighten the mood. And I was like, sent off by a security guard. Well, that's what he said at the Lord's dressing room as well. When, uh, when he was there. Apparently yeah. I was just trying to lighten the mood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think one of the MCC members said that as well. Like, mm, <laughs> probably that shot wasn't on with that. That that's what all they were saying, yeah. was it? Well, I want to come saying. to that. Just, yeah. just with the shield, like, yeah. um, so Jordan Buckingham <laughs> takes the final wicket. Uh, he's giving it large to a good couple dozen people at the Gabba, or was it to you guys? Like, and that's surely what you want to see with the shield, don't you? Yeah, yeah. like the last two games that we've had have been really close, um, close finishes. Like Tazzy, they chased down four thirty on the last day, which is something that doesn't really happen very much. And then this game, the most recent one, we lost with four overs to go with three runs to get. So it's really good that Shield Cricket's getting really close. Um, a lot of teams are, are playing really good cricket, and I think that's the strength of Australian cricket is when the Shield competition is strong. Mm. So when uh, Jordan Buckingham cleaned up, was he? And then he wheeled away, and then he shushed the crowd. Was was there a dog barking or something? 
I think so, yeah. I think there must have been. Guard. There was a security. <laughs> no, he, he didn't come back after that first, that second day. So oh, he, he wasn't. He was. He, 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 he was not not he, present. We never after saw that. him again. So he lost his job. He was taken care of. Yeah. He's actually never been a security guard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what he was doing. I thought he just scored a, a Champions League final winner, yeah. was shushing the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> um, he ran a long way, but my head was down again. Uh, <laughs> you got to watch where you're walking. Yeah. No, I was sitting down after it was. He got bowled. Put my head in my hands. So. Um, yeah, well, they played really good cricket the whole game, um, which is good to see. Like well, for us, yeah. it's not yeah. that, that's not the only place where there's been um, a little bit going on the crowd. You also had yeah. a bloke at Silverwater in New South Wales yeah. giving it to you, blokes. His name's Richie, and he had a golden dildo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the colour's important. And I believe, I believe he was giving it to you specifically about. Um, you wearing pads while fielding on the boundary at Lords. That's according to reports from the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we we rock, we rock up first game, uh, shield game at this beautiful new facility. Um, this bloke's in a full suit, <laughs> full three piece suit at the start of the day, and I'm like, this bloke's dressed to the nines. Like he's obvious. Is he like some important person to come and like bless the ground? Um, and then all of a sudden I look over when I'm batting and he's wearing a singlet and no shoes. And I was like, what's going on? This bloke's going from, from hero to zero. Um, and then he just starts sledging me. And I was like, looking at the New South Wales place, like, what is this bloke? And he just co- keeps going at him, keeps going at him. And as I'm, I get out, caught down lakeside off my hip, but that doesn't matter. Um, and uh, he starts giving me a send off. Another person in the crowd giving me a send off yeah. and so i unpad walk over was getting a coffee and he just happened to be around the same area that the coffee shop was um so i had a chat with him um there's people in the crowd telling him that they're trying to enjoy the cricket and he's ruining it and he tries to tell me that uh he is a full-time cricket supporter um mm-hmm. who earns 50 grand a week on housing <laughs> so i i was like okay Good for you. Well done. Probably are a lot good, of older guys investments. who do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good investments. Explains the suit. Nice portfolio. Yeah. Um, he bought a $3 million house for four raspberries yeah. in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> um, he traded it for four raspberries. <laughs> no, he traded it for Jack and the Bean store. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying he, he might make 50k a week. I yeah, said, he I got him so early for the housing market. obviously yeah. wished him well with that and just try to tell him that there's people here trying to enjoy this this great spectacle. Um, but he wasn't having any of it. He just kept coming. Um, and the security guards kicked him out and then he was standing outside with a sign um, screaming again and then the police came. Um, but I was doing a lap later on in the in the game and he was like sledging me from the boundary. I said, why aren't you inside? Um, and everyone in the crowd loved it. So. Oh, it's good, yeah, it's all good feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, everyone chanted, Ran Shaw, yeah, Ran Shaw. Yeah, I got carried <laughs> back to the dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, on a chair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, some weird, some weird. Fireworks sort of, went off. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Some weird things have happened in, in Shield Cricket. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome that Shield Cricket's now basically just a fourth grade game. Like at any, anywhere be, yeah. in Australia. It reminds me it's of so back harsh. at Toomble. That is really harsh, yeah. <laughs> back at Toomble with the train tracks people coming from the train tracks and just sledging yeah. people, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You mentioned Toomble there. I was going to mention it later, but how often do you bring up your 300 for Toomble? Uh, well, was it 300 red? Uh, 345 out on the last ball of the day. You got out. Caught deep, deep in wicket trying to hit a six. Okay. After um, 350. Yeah. Um, so one of our coaches for Queensland, Wade Townsend, he mm. is the former record holder. So uh-huh. he had the previous high score for Toomble, but he made it in the semi final. He batted for a day and a half, like day and three. He got T at day two, they declared, yeah. and he got 311. And so I, I like to call him former record holder. Right. Yes. Going, yeah. And he likes to tell me that he's got a record of like the highest score on a Sunday in March at yeah. Toomble. And after like a full moon. After a full moon yeah. with uh, a pitch that's 21.3 meters long yeah. and all that sort of thing. And I just yeah. say, okay. Yeah, but yeah, who is it? Who is it against? Uh, my my three hundred or his? Yeah, no, your three hundred. Uh, Winham, Winham, man, Winham. Okay, are, aren't they pretty strong? They were at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course they were. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were very, they were, they very, were strong very strong that day. They were full strength. Yeah, yeah. full. Alice McDermott opened the bowling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. That's why were you playing twos that day? Um, <laughs> disciplinary reasons. <laughs> Well, hang on. What about Paul Walter, new BBL signing for the Heat? I uh, just see on. So he's an English guy uh, who's previously played at. at like this club called Deep Dean. Do we know this? Deep Dean Subbies. No. Um, I think it's on the Gold Coast. Uh, 
Could be wrong there. He's a BBL signing for the Heat this year. He's 203 centimetres tall. Oh he's my played in the God. 100 last year. Uh, he, he's played in the ILT20, and he's playing Deep Dean Subbies, like smoking blokes everywhere. Guys are wa- worried about their cars getting hit, et cetera. Like, I guess the question is, like, is it one of the great feelings being a pro cricketer just destroying hapless amateurs? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. yeah, it can be. Um, it's very humbling when they nick you off mm. or hit you for six. Um, yeah. I think... I, I, I was on TikTok the other week and saw myself getting hit for six, three times. And I was like, I do not remember this game, but some, <laughs> some club, club cricketer in Brisbane uploaded all this video of him hitting fours and sixes off bowlers. And I was there. Could be AI. It could be. It wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me bowling. Um, uh, is Queensland, are you guys bottom of the table at the moment? Is that right? I don't, know, I don't, Vixer, I don't Vixer. look at. I don't look at the table. It doesn't. So it, right now, and not because at the end of March, because as, as then you actively avoid it. Like if it's yeah. coming up, you go. I'm just not looking at that. Or mm. figure of um, speech. Bit of both. I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't actively go out and look for the for the table. Um, mm. It's very confusing with the point system these days. What well, it is yeah. for me. Do you yeah. understand how the points work of the shield yeah. table um, as a player? Mm. Yeah, sometimes. Um, I think it's like a point one a wicket, and then okay. point zero one a run after two hundred before the hundredth over. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think, oh, that's ob- good. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, um, are you sure it's before? But yeah, we've had a couple of times where we've skittled, got skittled in the first innings, and then not taken a wicket in the first. So, right, uh, it's hard to get bonus points when you're not when yeah. you're playing on those type of wickets. Um, how do you find was he as captain? Very good. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Sorry, sorry. I was sorry. I was, I was, <laughs> See, I was, you looked at me like, I wasn't, is there something I should no, know? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't linking those two things. I was just, I was just asking because uh, was he? How long has he been captain for of Queensland? Oh, he's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven, yeah. seven years is my guess. Okay, yeah, long time. Yeah. So, what, how long, how long, how long have you played for Queensland for? I debuted in twenty fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So almost your entire Queensland career. Yeah. So we, yeah. Okay. Well, he's been sensational for you then, I suppose. Yeah, I, I love playing with Uzi. He's a very competitive guy. He's obviously knows what he's doing. He's played for a long time. Um, yeah. And he's pretty calm. So I think last year in Big Bash, when he came back and, and captained, it was sort of, it felt like it was a lot calmer in the dressing room. And mm. he obviously calls the shots and, and smacks them as well. So it's pretty handy. Is he, is he low key alpha? Like yeah. I don't know. Oh, was he I, superficially? It's not low key. Oh, he's just yeah, alpha. Oh, he's really? alpha. He likes, yeah. to, likes to say who he is and yeah. like. Always likes to do well, golf course. We play a lot of golf together, and we can't. We either have to be on the same team, or it's we just argue. Okay, yeah. This okay. is a personal bugbear that of no interest to anybody else. So I'll say it. Um, every time we speak to Usman, as guys who grew up playing Sydney Test cricket, yeah. we're like around the same time yeah. as Uzi. It's very difficult for us to accept that he um, is a Queenslander uh, and he calls himself a Queenslander. And every time we see him, we're essentially saying, like, if you're from New South Wales, mm. and um, to be fair, he says he's from Islamabad, so that does come into it. A bit of, it, it, bit of a trump card, that one. Well, I was just want to ask, like, every time I say <laughs> to him, I, I see him, I'm like, we want to claim you as another New South Wales product, yeah. and he basically refuses. But I want to ask, from a Queenslander's perspective, yeah. do you... Do you accept him as a Queenslander, given that he's played and like he's grown, he's born and raised in uh, in New South Wales? Yeah, well, he always mentions how he used to be a seam bowler, um, and this is a big one. He says he was like one of the leading wicket takers in Sydney Great Cricket with his seam bowling. Well, that's a lie, and I just don't believe it. So yeah, that's a lie. Yeah, yeah, it's a lie. Yeah. Oh, you guys have you checked the stats and stuff? I was there. You were yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get out to him? On no, I never. He never. He never I bowled. Never. He never seen him bowl. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. both played so. against him and never seen him bowl. Yeah. yeah. So he likes to talk about how he's like a, a great seam bowler in Sydney Test cricket. Um, yeah. So he's invented that. Yeah. Sydney Test cricket or no, no, no that, that's one of the. He's actually truths. degrading the competition by suggesting yeah. that he would be able to bowl in Sydney Test cricket. Yeah. Oh well, he likes to talk about that, but yeah, I think he's a Queenslander. Um, okay. Wow. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let, let's talk about something that uh, you made the, the good decision to move north of the. I say we should call and gather. I know that's important for you guys, but um, <laughs> uh, seems to be more important to you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I can let it go whenever. No, I'm yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Um, well, something that unites us all. Like we, we um, <laughs> we had the the privilege of of interviewing Stuart Broad last week, um, and na- naturally we discussed what happened at Lords. Um, and the, the question was put to what him. Happened at Lords? Uh, well, that's I guess history is written by the winners, but the, I suppose 
is it the winner of the game or is it the series? I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, who has the ashes? But he, we, we asked him about um, the fact that he seemed unsure about whether he was embarrassed mm. about his actions following that day because I've heard interviews where he says he was embarrassed that evening but then he continues to speak about his actions and the important impact they had on turning the series psychologically. Um, you were there on the field under the lid. Uh, so what were your recollections of, uh, of Stewart's conduct after the Besto dismissal? Were you one of the guys telling him to calm down? <laughs> yeah, that was, I was the ringleader in that one. Um, <laughs> no, so I, I was leaving the squad the next day. So yeah. I knew that I was gone. So I was like, well, I'm just going to sit in the back here and not say a word. No, I don't want to cause any drama. Um, but I remember after lunch, like the whole crowd were booing us and he was there like talking to Pat and I was just like standing there going, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must have been an amazing watch on the field because oh. like, you were just watching something. Just like any yeah. cricketer, whenever yeah. there's any incident, will was, always crane their neck to be like, "What's what's?" It was yeah, one yeah, of my yeah. favorite moments in my career. It has to the, be yeah. the whole like walking through the pavilion, yeah. Yeah. like seeing you had that, that. There's a great photo. Cheshire cat smile yeah. looking back at it. Yeah, so yeah. there's all these like 85 year old men just spraying us for being cheats and like. Do you remember what they were saying specifically? I just remember them cheat, saying cheat, cheat. and like frothing at the mouth. <laughs> And I'm like, rabies. These blokes, like, someone's <laughs> people are kicking other people, and like, I'm like, what is going on? Like, really? Eighty-five year old man just so angry at a game where someone just like overarms a ball at someone else. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. Calm down. Yeah. And then like a few guys got kicked out, and then we came back out after lunch, and the MCC were all yeah. clapping, and like we we're like, this is so fake. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was still like I'm so. Not happy, but it was pretty awesome to be around everything that went on that day. Like my memory of the stumping, I appealed to Square Leg and yeah. the umpire wasn't there. I've like appealed. I'm like, what is Square? Oh, he's over there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like turning around and yeah. then like everyone's blowing up and I'm just standing there just like with my helmet on that's broken. Like, So just keep in mind that whatever you say here, you, you, I'm sure your comments won't get picked up and no one's watching yeah. this. All this the cameras so, aren't on. So just, yeah, just, yeah. just factor that in. But like given that Johnny, like he was doing that consistently – like that must have been spoken about. Someone must have recognised that that was happening and you were at bat pad, so why did you do it? I uh, I thought it was uh, the best thing for the team. <laughs> um, you basically retained the Ashes, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. The th I was there for three tests and we won all three. Mm. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're including India, You're including aren't you? Including yeah. Just for people in the comments. Yeah, people, people are already typing, so yeah. 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 No, so, so when, when Johnny was like doing his thing, did you, did you recognise that he was like, he had a pattern where he was... Walking out. Of space. Um, no, I didn't. No. I was offered the fairies. I was just standing at short leg, going, "Don't get hit or don't drop a catch." Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was quite funny um, fielding on the boundary after the lunch. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm in full pads. You're in pads, the, yes. As Which is why Richie yeah. was giving yeah, it. Richie with was gold spraying by the with dildo. gold dildo. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I'm in full pads, like a deep <laughs> mid wicket on when Ben Stokes is batting, and I'm like, "Do not drop a catch. Yeah, do not drop a catch." Like, mm. I just and everyone's spraying me, and I'm like. It wasn't me. They're like, why you do it? You cheat. I'm like, I don't remember underarming the ball. Like, it's yeah. not me. I was just innocent bystander. Yeah. Same old Aussies though. Yeah, same, old same old Aussies. Same old Aussies. Aussies. Yeah. So, um, but fair. yeah, that's that was that was probably the most nervous part because I wasn't playing. I hadn't taken part in any of the match apart from fielding. Yeah. Um, so I was standing in deep square, just do not drop a catch. But when Stokes was going in that game, to be fair, it was like well, I think we all had oh. trauma from seeing him do it before, not yeah. just headingly, but it just generally. It was one of speaking. the most awesome things oh, I've ever so, seen. So <laughs> being on the field, I can like obviously I've I'm, I'm yet to play a test match, uh, yeah. Renners, but like I can imagine. Hopefully one day. Yeah. Indeed, um, we were talking before about how we get mm. ourselves into the big play the board this year. game test match. <laughs> 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 but I can imagine just being on the field and a guy's just going and like, you know that he's the game yeah. and you're in the outfield and the balls are going in the air consistently. And you're just thinking like, he's going to miss Q1 eventually. And, and Steve Smith dropped the catch earlier, didn't he? But like, I, I can just, uh, it's making me nervous even thinking about it. Just being yeah. like, if something's coming towards me, I'm scared. And the hard part of Lords is like the crowd's so low. So the ball, you lose. Oh, you lose yeah. it. Especially the Ruth Strauss day. Everything's red. Uh, and the cricket yeah. ball's red. Ah. Yeah, yeah, right. Good shout. So, like, I was <laughs> cricket feeling... Cricket ball's ready. I know. I know. <laughs> just, oh, in, no, mate. just in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know what Sydney Cause, test cricket is. Because in test matches, just like a metal ball. Um, yeah. And then you roll it down the guy's arm. <laughs> yeah. Like, iron out the felt and not actually just... <laughs> Mom, so, where's, where's the iron, mum? Yeah. What's the it's ball? It's the only time you ironed as a kid, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't allowed near the iron. 
Um, yeah, so like <laughs> the, you thought, especially with the way Stokes was hitting, they were coming flat and you're like oh. trying to pick it up. You're trying to pick it up. Oh, I think I'm shit, man. He ran two on me because I threw it the wrong end or something like that. But uh, yeah, it was a nervous time to be a subfielder. Yeah. With the um, still though, fuck, that's so with cool. With the. Like, uh, just as we talk about this, is it, there's, there's going to be a lot of people, I just want to acknowledge there's a lot of people who are going to be saying, I can't believe they're still talking about it. But it was just awesome. Uh, like, the whole, like, it's just, a guy who's like, on the this, field. This, this, it, yeah. this is the great cricketer. Like, yeah. uh, we live and breathe the <clears throat> little nuances and pieces of gossip yeah. <clears throat> that happen with, like, crazy shit like this. So it will be spoken about for ages. When the dismissal happened, like, and guys were in a huddle and the Bearstow and Stokes were there, and I saw, like, maybe Hedy was going over to Stokes and just – Saying something like, like what? What are we? Yeah, like what are we? What are we talking about in the huddle there? Yeah. You know what I mean? What are we hearing? Like, man, that's fucking. Out. I think it's pack, like pack it was em. like um, they were arguing that the guy called over. Um, oh yeah, we were yeah. arguing that he was out of his crease already. So I was just standing there drinking water and going, "It's pretty cool." Like, mm. Everyone booing me, like mm. felt pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, you make it seem like you won a competition to be on the field? <laughs> that's right. Make a wish. <laughs> Because so when so we when the make a wish get a bat pad, <laughs> so when Gaz went down, all the twelve is like looked at each other and were like, "Someone's gonna have to field for the rest of this match." So who, who else was who else was in the squad? There was Harris, Boland, Boland. Uh, Pearson, um, Marsh. Yeah, okay, and okay. and me, I think, yeah. I think and you got the gig, was, and yeah. I got the gig, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd I'll see why that's the case, yeah. I no, think sorry, it was because they liked that. see me fielding in pads and stuff. Yeah. So like I was running from demon wicket to short leg to demon wicket to silly point, like yep. between balls when Stokes yep. and uh, Broad were batting. But yeah, like we all looked at each other. We we're like, oh no, like someone's going to have to field here. Mm. But then that was a, a good thing because then during the batting innings, I was I was like, I just nicked off for two. Yeah. yeah. Obviously Sit I don't there. want to get a duck. And I was Feed up. Like, Feed up, lunch, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. cups of tea. Like, yeah. like, can you get me a drink? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm a yeah. fielder now. So, can you get me a drink? I'm a fielder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fielder now. Um, get me out of here. <laughs> but yeah, it was like we we're all so nervous about fielding because none of us really want. And I was trying to get Jimmy on. Um, yeah, you know, his first like Ash's experience. Yeah, yeah. he's like, oh no, normally I need like catching apparatus and stuff like that, like keeping gloves. And <laughs> I was like, just go out there, field for an over. And he's like, no, no, you go. And I was like, okay. okay. Well, yeah, that's how that's how it works at eh? the works. top level. No, yeah. no, you go. Yeah. No, I'll go. I need, I need catching like, apparatus. Ash is on the line. Everyone in Australia watching it. No, no, you yeah. go. I need catching apparatus. Yeah. And then when you get on, he's like, "Get me a drink." Yeah. <laughs> I just want to. I, I want to stick with the Ashes for a second. But you mentioned Jimmy Pearson. I just want to ask about him. Um, I don't really know what my question is, other than like I I, like he's going I look well. at him for a couple of years. His numbers are unbelievable. Yeah. He's a great keeper. He's a great bat. Uh, what's he like to play with? Um, what do you think his levels are? Oh, I think he's he's improved so much over the last uh, three, four years specifically. Um, he's obviously a good player growing up, but um, I think he, he sort of knuckled down sort of in that just before COVID and just worked on his game, started talking more about cricket. Um, and, yeah, I think he's a great keeper, a great batter. Um, we're so lucky to sort of have him... Ness at seven, um, mm. Wildermuth at eight, Sandu at nine. Like it really extends our batting order with him being able to bat six and keep at such a, a high level. I think he's got a chance. Unfortunately, there's sort of a couple of keepers around there that are ahead of him at the moment. But I think if he he got the call up, um, mm. I think there was a chance at one point when Kerry got in the head at Headingley. Yeah. Um, he was nearly in. Yeah, and I think he, I was speaking. I wasn't there. Um, I was on holiday playing golf, but um, I spoke to him yeah, after, ask, yeah. um, and he was like, he was very, very close to playing, which yeah. would have been a wow. amazing wow. story. Wow, like cool. you guys are you guys are a really strong team, Queensland. Yeah, well, obviously Joe Burns who scored runs in the last game, yeah. Aussie, and, and yourself, and good um, unit too. I don't know, it's good socials there at Queensland as well. I feel, yeah. I feel like you got a you got yeah, a brand I feel like you guys are good mates as yeah. well. Yeah, we play we've played a lot together. Yeah, okay. um, we've had the same team sort of for the last sort of six seven years um we've mm. won a couple of shields in that time but it's funny like we always talk about wanting to win the shield and like we feel like this group is is so talented that we should but then some things you some things don't go your way you you win a couple but you sort of want to try and have that like longer term like winning a few in a row but shield cricket is so strong like you look at wa you can field a third 11 and still perform um, mm. with guys who are away injured and all that sort of thing so 
Steel cricket strong. Australian cricket strong. Club cricket strong. Yeah. What, what, what about did. lunch at Lords? Were you there for the... I was uh, there, yeah. yeah. Fortunately, I was facing away from Besto. Okay. Um, because all, <laughs> all the thing happened and I just absolutely lost it. I, I nearly spat out my uh, food because I was laughing. <laughs> I just like... Yeah. Just started laughing and fortunately... Did it surprise you that Dave had that level in him? No. No. Uh, he's, he's funny? Yeah, very yeah. funny. And okay. I, I, I was... Because he was like, sort of sitting across from me and I... When Besto said it, I was just like looking at what's going on. <laughs> and then he said it and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he just walked out of the lunchroom. Yeah. And I was like, well, that was awesome. That just added to the... It's quite funny. I just Warner, wanna, Warner walked out. No, Besto. Oh, Besto walked yeah. out, right? I thought, I thought he just, it was a Warner He just came drop. in looking for a fight and then yeah. walked out. Yeah. 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 I just want to highlight... Um, that you are a fucking gun. Like, you're a jet player. You've already scored hundreds for Australia. You feel the first slip for Australia. You've also been um, very kind to us. And actually, we did a podcast once. Have we already said this before? No. No. Mm-hmm. We did a podcast once with you. Um, you don't remember this, but we did a podcast. <laughs> and then um, and then it didn't get recorded. Like, the, literally, the, the, yeah. the button was not pressed record. It was like, after your test boo. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah. 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 yeah which was when 20... Seven, 16. 16. 16. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Um. So, so you know, but like we're just like giddy great cricketers. So, we're talking about the time out of your glittering career already as a young person, but we're talking about the time you subfielded, and I'm, I'm actually excited by this conversation. So I, you know, I just want to acknowledge that you're a fucking gun. Um, but like, but yeah, back to lunch. Yeah. No, anyway, so um, <laughs> now why were you wearing pads on the field? Um, so uh, uh, can you talk about like the afterwards? Because I when 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 the stumping happened, you probably didn't understand that the furor was going to be so big at the time. But like. Did it sort of just start to descend upon the dressing room that like this was going to be a big moment? And also how fucking good was that song? Um, yeah, it was sort of like obviously the crowd were pretty vocal throughout the rest of the day. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when when we won, we were shaking hands with the English and like I played cricket with Baz McCullum, like had a good time with him at the heat. At the heat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I went to shake his hand and he just deadpanned me and I was like. Oh, he brushed you? I was like, no, he shook my oh, hand, shook, like, hand, shook yeah. hand, but it was like deadpan face. Like after Edgbaston, it was like, oh, like, how are you going? I but that's because he's very relaxed, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. normally see him on the TV with the feet up. Yeah, and, sort of and then I like, played with Marcus Trascothic as well, and he was just like deadpan. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, this is... And oh, then, they, they really felt it, yeah. And then we were like, all our families came, and it was during partner period, and all mm. like I had my little girl on the outfield at Lords. Mm. Um, so we were all worrying about that, and then had the song, went back to the hotel room. Um, I didn't really go on social media very much because of the amount of people that spray you, um, mm-hmm. which is always good fun. Yeah. Um, but then it was sort of the next day in the papers was just full of all this stuff, and fortunately I left the squad, so I, I drove to... Edinburgh um, got away from everything, which was handy. But I know the the boys at Headingley were walking in front of the the Hollies, um, giving drinks. We're getting absolutely hosed. Everyone was always getting hosed. So um, yeah, we probably didn't realise how serious it was. Um, but in terms of what we were, we're pretty like what happened happened, and yeah, you guys are cheats. It's yeah, funny, yeah, it's much, funny yeah. man, because like obviously, like the English will say, you know, uh, probably fairly that you know when they come to Australia, it gets pretty fucking horrendous out here. Just think about like that whole incident for all the guys involved. It's like, oh fucking hell, it's pretty embarrassing for everyone. Like, mm. I mean, getting getting sprayed like that for an incident, like, sorry, he was just out. Yeah, sorry. and like you sorry. compare it to other current events in the world of cricket, like a bloke got timed out, a bloke, yeah, an English bloke got run out by a keeper from a leg side wide. Like, <laughs> they're pretty potentially worse than what happened yeah. but just yeah. because it was at lords day five they were yeah. close to winning it mm. apparently and um, it's the ashes but the people ashes. feel it you know yeah yeah, yeah. so that was england probably, owns morality so yeah. yeah as well um so yeah i think that's probably what added to it all as well yeah are you are you, are you happy that you got to experience it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like it was awesome yeah like i get to tell like with a few of the boys talking about books and stuff that could be a chapter so on <laughs> one day privileged enough to need to write a book yeah i'll have that as a chapter when i got to eat lunch at lords yeah and what do you remember about sandpaper <laughs> i wasn't there i was winning a shield with queensland yeah at allen Waterfield. <laughs> thank now god there, now there's a chapter <laughs> yeah. that's a chapter fly out <clears throat> two hours after winning a shield having one beer i'll sleep on the plane <laughs> can, I, can i ask about the, the summer upcoming though Renner? so you've been very uh like clear in your comments about the, the next spot in the Australian team and you're just, um, 
What have you actually said? Like you, you, that you can't do anything about it, that the media is going to talk about it. All you can do is score runs and that's basically it. Um, just a curious one. I, I feel like in days gone by when a player is in this kind of situation where you are in a race for an Australian berth, you know, you'll find out later that they were like rocky for that situation. You know, it's blood, sweat, mm. tears, desperation, trying to become an absolute monster. Whereas today's players, I feel like for them, like relaxation is their weapon of choice as in like not stressing themselves out with tension and anxiety and actually putting things in perspective and actually looking like a normal person. Is that like a fair read or is it behind the scenes you are Rocky trying to get this job? No, so hmm. I have had learnings from this. So 2017, before the Ashes in Australia, um, I was opening the batting in Bangladesh, like in India did really well. Um, mm. And then that we had five Shield games before the first test. Uh, four shield games before the first That's test. Right. So, this. like, I was a lock. Like, I was mm. opening the batting in the first test of the Gabba. And then I missed out a couple of times. And then I started thinking, oh, I need to score some runs so that I can prove that I should be that opener. And then missed out a couple more times the next couple of games. And then um, sort of then the media started coming up, is Renshaw ready to play in the Ashes? And I read that, reading everything back then as a 21-year-old. I was like, oh, maybe I'm not ready. And then missed out again in the in the game. And then uh, we were playing at AB against New South Wales the week before. And Stark, Hazelwood, Bird were all up playing, uh, all up training that week before the, sh- the test match. And Buff rings me the morning of the game going, oh, you want to come up and face them in the nets? And like I, I was no confidence. But then faced all those three for an hour. Didn't get out. Felt really good. And I was like, okay. I'm ready. Like, I don't – like, runs are so-and-so. And then the last innings, I got caught down leg side for a duck. I just remember walking into the dressing room and just towel over my head just in in terrible condition. Mm. Um, next day, played golf um, with uh, Bull and Uzi at Brizzy and then got the call later that day. But I sort of knew the writing was on the wall. But I'd given myself so much stress before that that I – cost myself a spot in the team by yeah. no one's fault other than mine. Um, and then so I was, I scored 49 runs after five and a half shield games. Yeah. So I was terrible. And then yeah. made 51 not out the last innings before Christmas. And I was like, okay, I can start going. And then the, I didn't have to worry about South Africa because I was way back anyway. And then I just had a really good back half of the year because I wasn't stressing about anything. Mm. And so that was a really big learning for me, not going stressing about selection because you can cost yourself selection, you can get yourself selection. Like last year, I if you'd have told me at the start of the year I'd have played in the Sydney test and then the two first test, two, first two tests in India, I wouldn't have believed you because mm. I felt so far away. But then you just play cricket, play cricket, eventually you'll do well and they'll, then the opportunity comes. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's... So did, when so when you look back at that time, that whole Ashes uh, build up in 2017, um, do, how do you reflect on that? Like it, it sounds to me like you're saying you you cost yourself selection. Do you think do you put that down to do do you forgive yourself for that? Do you think there's another world where if you hadn't stressed yourself out, you might have just kept your spot in the side and and you know uh, just locked yourself in, uh, or do you just go well that's what I was doing at age 21 and I forgive myself for that and and I'm. I'm just a better person now. I've never actually thought about yeah. like what could have happened. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, but it's probably happens fruitless. happens for a reason. Like I wouldn't be where I am today. Like it it built me way close to my family. Um, mm, that yeah. experience like, then mm. sort of led into me taking a break from cricket, yeah. which then propelled me again into it in a to a better place with my cricket. I'm, I might not be playing cricket at, the, at yeah. this time. You never know. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, that happened for a reason. It was obviously a, a tough time in my life, but it made me stronger now, and it's it's made me learn from it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, mm. would I be right in concluding? You, you probably feel like you're you're better for the experience, and you're you're happy with where you are with your cricket at the moment, and your psychology towards cricket, and and your your life. And it, you, it seems to me that you're just taking the view that existentially what will be will be you're just going to relax play your best cricket see what happens yeah i think so a few years ago playing at adelaide phil salt was there yeah and we were just talking about um life and cricket and stuff and he was like to me three things that you can't try too hard at cricket sleeping and picking up girls 
<laughs> and I was like, I mean, I don't, I don't really know the third one, but the first two, very true. Uh, when you try too hard to fall asleep, it's never sleep well. Yeah, so yeah. and so, therefore, you you try too hard to trick it. Yeah, yeah, you're struggling. So mm -hmm. I think, like, I think about that a fair bit. Yeah, that comes up randomly in my head. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, getting so deep. <laughs> I'm going to think about that a fair bit as yeah, well. So I'm going to think about it a lot. Feel, yeah, feel, mm. feels good. Yeah, feels good. so like that was uh, like for someone who's my age and around the same time, it's like, yeah. oh, cool. Like other people have these same things where they're trying too hard for cricket. And like you look at Uzi's career, like he got dropped in 2019. He went back and just played for Queensland, loved it, mm. ended up getting back in the ashes and just going banging. He's like you wouldn't expect it to be here when he got dropped in 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who who replaced you in that? Was it Joe Burns? Bancroft. Bancroft did. Yeah. Bancroft did. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. then the next week after I got dropped for Bancroft, we played WA at the Wacker. Ah, mm. right. And, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how it works out. for me that week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's good. Wow. Uh, oh, how interesting. It, how, how do you feel like you're hitting the ball now? Yeah, feeling good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Had, golf, golf, I mean. Golf, yeah. yeah no, I've got I mean. cover drives with golf. I've got, <laughs> yeah. I've got the drive here. plane. Yeah. You're on plane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, cricket feeling good. Um, it's so circumstantial. Like obviously, everyone looks at the runs that you have, mm. but like you feel as good as I've ever felt. So um, mm. feel like I'm hitting the ball nicely and watching the ball, and body's in a good position as well. Yeah. And so when you say like Marcus Harris, it's 160. You go like, yeah, but that's at the junction. At the so junction. At the junction. No, I've never. <laughs> 160 is 160 anywhere. Um, I think you, like he's a, a great player. If, if he opens yeah, yeah. next, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to be a, a good player for us. <laughs> I like Harry so. too, right, mate. mate. The, 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 and, and, bang, and bangers yeah. as well. Missed out yeah. last two games. Uh, yeah. against he's smacking them. Yeah. I oh, know he is, but <laughs> you, you're not a guy who looks at that and goes like, yes. No. Yeah. Only when I'm playing against them because then we don't have to get them out. Yes, it's a yeah, team. Because they're already out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Uh, Matt Renshaw, thanks so much for joining us. For, for both the end of uh, Sid's interview and, yeah. and your own. No, thank you for having me, guys. Well, let's try and uh, publish this yeah. one. And press record now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a great chat with Matt Renshaw. Mm. Really enjoyed Matt being in the studio. Uh, and, yeah, we, we were talking before off-air. We also mentioned in that chat just then that um, one of the interviews, one of the first interviews we ever did and also it was in the first year of doing the, the podcast of 2016, Matt Renshaw just made his debut. Yeah. He, for a couple of years before then, he'd been like messaging us about tweets and that yeah. kind of thing yeah. on, on Twitter. Getting involved. Um, so he was uh, he was on board with TJC for a long time before he actually ever played Test Match Cricket. And then once he had success, we thought we're going to utilise his success mm. and make that our own. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Le leverage off him um, but yeah just uh, the record button was not pressed that day and uh, and we lost a, a ghost interview one of two we've ever done the first one we ever did with uh, Ed Cowan the first ever podcast we ever did with Ed Cowan mm -hmm. in fact the first ever podcast we ever did full stop yep uh, ghost interview um, but we still think about it and talk about that um, Shield's pretty hot we didn't we didn't talk about this uh, with, with Matt like we talked about the uh, Queensland South Australia game yep um, but, well I mean New South Wales have broken their winning streak yeah. Uh, 15 games without a win. They bowled Western Australia out Bing. for 141 and 136. They only needed to chase four runs in the fourth innings, and they did it with four leg buys. Uh, as Angus wrote to us on Patreon, a very part cricket thing to happen in the Shield. New South Wales breaking their drought with four leg buys. Ha ha. Uh, Ollie Davies scored his first Shield 100 for New South Wales. He made 129 in their first innings. Uh, so I guess that means, because as we know, when you, Australian you come to the same conclusion as me. Yeah. When you say, well, Oscar gets done good, Australian cricket's done good. Apparently a really good 100 too from Ollie Davies. Now, I understand that other players in different states have scored hundreds and have been scoring hundreds for quite a while. Quite a while. But my understanding about Ollie Davies' hundred coming against WA. From Manly. Uh, yes, yes. Um, coming against, so that's premium. Yeah. Uh, coming against <laughs> WA, who are the Shield uh, champion, defending champion. Back to back. A couple of, couple of years running. Yeah. You know, you got the scorcher stuff there as well. You're talking about probably a test, second 11, third 11. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Dominant on the front foot, dominant on the back foot, uh, got yeah. New South Wales over the line. There's Give just something about better. watching him that I mm. thought, no, nah, that's that's Test cricket. Uh, that that he could be next cap. You know, Australian cricket starting to look brighter with a couple of old guys sort mm. of uh, falling off the cliff. Ollie Davies, 100 yeah. for New South Wales, and I'm starting In to a think. Blue cap. I'm starting to think baggy green. Yes, with yeah. that. Yep. Personally. Yep. 
Uh, so that is really, I mean, and you know, Jack Edwards' form's been really solid as yeah, well. Started true. the season really well. He's yeah. working with Shane Watson. Yeah. His bowling's come on as he's grown even further. So he's hitting the wicket hard. Mm. He scored some more runs lately. So I'm just wondering, Jack Edwards, if he can insert himself into the five or six man all rounder conversation, maybe front of the queue. Well, I'm not sure. I, I Has he leapfrogged Aaron Hardy yet? I don't know what it is about Jackson Bird who spent you know his entire career at Tasmania doing so well, but this year especially, yeah, something about Jackson Bird, yeah. something about him. He's averaging so, 40. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Marcus Harris made 164 for Victoria in their draw against Tasmania at the junction. Charlie Joaquin made 148, batting at three for Tassie in the first innings. Uh, so Tasmania and South Australia are now first and second. WA a third, New South Wales somehow fourth. Queensland fifth and the Vicks sixth. Uh, the leading run scorers at the moment is Cameron Bancroft, 458 runs at 76. Chris mm. Tremaine, who took five for against Western Australia at the SCG in this week just gone. He's a leading wicket taker with 23 poles at 15. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. But this update from Muzz on Patreon. Uh, just an update on Richard. The golden dildo waving heckler from the New South Wales Shield game, as told by Pete Lawler, he was there at the SCG yesterday and in fine form. Had advice for every player after every delivery. Relentless. Nothing but support for his blues and gentle derision for the Wacker boys. Had a chat to him afterwards and he's just very enthusiastic. Maybe not the full quid, but I was at the Shield on a Monday as well, so who am I to talk? <laughs> Indeed, Mus. Oh, and, and you're and, riding into a podcast. <laughs> oh, and security took his gold dildo, he said. <laughs> But he did have a little bicycle horn that he kept honking every, t- <laughs> every time something good happens. Okay. If, if, I, if I'm New South Wales, I lean into it, yeah. make him the team mascot. Well, we got a, 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 What have they got to lose given the current state? There's a, there's a few people writing in um, about Richard. Actually, if I could just if I could just find this here for mm-hmm. one second, it's from Marcus. Uh, who? Uh, so so this is more info on Richard, and I just want to say from the top. Um, uh, I think shout out to it. Like uh, my understanding of the things that Rich is calling out at the games is like, it's still quite nuanced and funny. I think we said this the other day, like he was telling Roger Choley, like, Oh, you, you're, you're going to go none for 80, <laughs> none for 82, <laughs> none for 82. <laughs> specifically. I like that kind of stuff. You know, that the shield, yeah. shield's coming back. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. I'm not sure if I meant to read this. Marcus says, boys, I think you really appreciate this one. As you've mentioned a few times, Richard, uh, Richie is an avid cricket fan and regularly attends New South Wales games. He was at the match last week and hurled abuse all day. However, what you may not know is that he follows the Parramatta first grade team around wherever they play. We had the privilege of playing against Parramatta at Old Kings Oval on the weekend. Uh, in the first week, Richie yelled from the sidelines for the entire day. It was a respectful effort, and we all couldn't believe his lung capacity. However, on day two, Richie was in an absolute mood and was filled with anger when he arrived at the ground, as no one from Parramatta had told him there would be an early start due to losing overs for rain on day one. As a result, Richie got in several fights, and by lunchtime, he'd been escorted by the boys in blue back to his house. (laughs) However, the highlight of the day was when Richie brought his own yellow chalk to the game and wrote a few messages to the team. Please see photo. Maybe we'll include this somewhere else, but uh, he's got a yellow chalk on the uh, like a big chalkboard that's at the ground. It's called the Ron Jeremy Stand, which says "All Welcome Free Cricket, uh, Smoking Allowed." Uh, so he says, "I'd like to preface that the reference to Ron Jeremy was supposed to be aimed at me." However, this m- uh, must be related to my moustache and not my pecker. Thought you boys would enjoy this one. Love the podcast. Cheers. So, well, Richard is single handedly saving Sheffield Shield cricket, and it's and it's important in the. Uh it is, General it conversation is it's a of phenomenon. It's a phenomenon in club cricket. Like clubs can attract yep, uh, yep. members of the community who That's end up true. following them around and supporting them. <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's and, true. Uh, and and that can be, that, and you know if you deal with it correctly and with great spirits, a lot of the players I think are talking to Richie and having a good time and whatever. Mm. Uh, then it can add value and colour to the occasion. It sounds like compl- it sounds completely harmless and it sounds quite funny. Uh, but except when those players, those people who come to follow support your team, start supporting another team, uh, which has happened <laughs> yeah. to us. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, God, you don't want to go there. Okay, yep. Hashtag ICGC. Hashtag ICGC is brought to you by Ponting Wines. You can use the code GETAFEW for 20% off at pontingwines.com.au. Buy now. You know that Ponting Wines have supported TGC for uh, – I suppose that actually more than more than a year. I want to say a number of years, yeah, if that's the yeah. case, a number of years, and we thank them for their support over the time. And uh, you can get twenty percent off using the code get a few at pontingwines.com.au. We've spoken about the selection in the past. There's a couple of Pinot Noirs there. There's mm. a rose there. There's a mm. Chardonnay. There's mm. a Pinot Gris. Mm. There is a Shiraz. Is there a Cabernet Sav? Yes, there is. Oh yeah, there's a cab. There's a cab Sav. I'm missing. So, I think there's a Riesling. 
Um, uh, is there a reason? I might, I might know. I think I've seen one in the office before here, Pezza. You got a Pinot Gris. You got a Pinot Noir. Noir. Chard- Hill Chard- Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, Chardy. Pictures here as well. Um, do we want to go into the entire collection here? Oh, I mean, there's so there's so many now. There's so much to choose from. We've always said the Shiraz is the best. Uh, I really hope people are supporting Ponting Wines because they've supported TJC for a couple of years now. And uh, and I think people should be getting around the 20% off discount using the code get a few. I'm actually I'm literally on pontingwines.com.au. There's yeah. already discounts being offered. And then you actually purchase the wine, chuck in, get a few, and wow. you're going to get 20% further wow. off that. Wow. We did a uh, – I see one here called the, the Captain's Call, um, Tasmanian Pinot Gris 2023. Mm. Um and uh, I think it's a very, very good drop. But uh, we did a game show the other day. Like uh, we came into the studio in the evening right. and uh, we were doing a game show with our sponsor for our, um, our YouTube work into India, uh, who, for whom our sponsor is cricket.com. And right. that, that's, that game show hasn't come out yet. But um, one of the questions you were asked was, uh, um, who's your ultimate captain? Uh, mm. Steve War, Ricky Ponting or MS Dhoni? And the answer you were meant to give. Yes. Uh, was MS Dhoni, but I mean, like you, to me, it's like it's like war, ponting, day, yeah. day, daylight, absolute daylight. Yeah. With respect to MS Dhoni, but and Graham Smith, of course, who led a great South African team, yeah. you know, to the mace, yeah, or whatever it was at the time. Dhoni, Graham Smith, Kumar Sangakara, all of a all of a level, yeah. fantastic players, all and and God Nathan speed, Astle, God speed to them, Astle, couple of games, yeah. Ken Rutherford, you yeah, know, yeah. all good players, all, yeah. and you wish them and their families well. I do wish their families well. Yeah, but there's a there's a there's a fair bit of daylight before yeah. I'm getting up to yeah. Alex RT, Stewart, RTP. Yeah, you know, yeah. Ponting's captain's call: Tasmanian Pinot Gris 2023 <laughs> at pontingwines.com.au. You use your code get a few. Hashtag guys to DC. You want to do it, Pez? Yeah, anon. Writes in, bit of a ramble, you'll have to excuse me, excused. Well, on the final night of a three-day bender to the Melbourne Cup as part of a punters club, I was struck with a thought. After having a generally standard cup day, wins, losses, chase your losses at the Cas, and then the eventual journey home, mm. I found myself being the last one up watching Australia capitulate against the well-organised and valiant Afghanistan. As I watched on the edge of my seat, the enigma Glenn Maxwell, Nick, Knack, Paddy Whack, Pitching Wedge, Pad and Bludgeon the ball to all parts <laughs> of the, on the way to a magnificent <laughs> fighting hundred. Mm. The stats came up for the highest percentage of catches per team. It got me thinking, catches win matches, but it depends who you play and when. I saw England say, to top the table with the highest percentage for chances created. You'll have to confirm and insert this data in for me. No. Alongside <laughs> India and South Africa. Australia about fourth or fifth on catches percentage, two above Afghanistan who have Australia on the ropes and would have maybe will have fucked them deep in the ass if they if they take slash took their catches. E.g. the scat enigma maxi boy on bugger all sweeping to short fine. South Africa World Cup semi-final vibes. Great yeah. grammar here. Yeah. If Oz win uh, off a Maxwell Daddy 100, it solidifies the obvious catches win matches, but to Depends who you play and when. England being bottom of the table after being beaten well by Minnows and Australia top four yet to lose to a Minnow. Minnow teams are getting up for games or slacking off a bit. I believe Minnows will start doing the bigger teams in more often as their fielding improves. The final hurdle. Therefore, 50 over cricket is good and needed in some way on the international scene and may be the perfect way to drag the Minnows slash underdog slash giant killers into the 21st century of professional cricket and onwards to bigger and better things. Imagine having a rivalry with the Dutch. Amsterdam, great circuit. Zamper and Stoin going right at right at home in the coffee shops along with the bison. Smithy probably cruising down a canal somewhere puffing on a doob. The Dutch already know how to circuit in Australia considering half of them play grade cricket here. But maybe you could take them on a trip to Darwin, another great circuit that really sums up the Australian way of doing things. Crocs, thongs, VBs, humidity and still being able to get hosed out of the pub in 2023. Anyway, bit of a ramble. Nothing like a bit too much Carl Rackerman to get the brain cells firing and dribbling. <laughs> Max is on 110 now. Maybe he might do it. It'll save us the misery and embarrassment. Well-earned win by the mighty Afghanis, if they do do it, of losing to a minnow nation. Maintaining our ever-present alpha aura of just refusing to lose to beta sides. Can Afghanistan win the next World Cup if they get their fielding in order? As I asked this, Australia needs 61 from 63 after having faced utter put bowling for the last 10 overs. Maybe I should just go to bed. Cheers and on. P.S. Max is staring a double hundred in the face 
on one leg in one of the greatest dominations in ODI history. <laughs> Why don't people love this format? So many questions, so many musings, but too scattered to write and or record them. Love always and on. PPS, the bloke has just played French cricket for an over. <laughs> six, six, four, double ton and won the game. Maybe the Minos are still a bit of a ways off. <laughs> So he started to he started yeah. to write that, yeah. and he's thinking, you know what, these minnows, they 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 well could be something in it for them. Mm. Oh no, Max Max has done them. Mm. Nah, French cricket six six four, yeah. bit of a ways off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what Glenn Maxwell does to a man. Thank you very much to Peter Siddle for joining us in studio. Thanks very much to Matt Renshaw for joining us in studio. Thanks very much for hanging in there with us all the way for this very long podcast. The World Cup semifinals are here. That means the World Cup final is just around the corner this Sunday night. What's going to happen? We're going to be there for all of it, Pezza. And by there, for all of it, I mean online, on the internet, and in your ears, and on your eyeballs. See you later.